Hello, hello. Hey, very good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Good day. Welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Sim Pilot. Today we're taking the Fly-by-Wire A32NX A320 Neo for a flight from Manchester down to Grenoble. It's a route we did. I think we did it last year. Um, and it is, of course, a classic sort of winter charter style flight. This channel was founded on flying charter flights from the UK and old uh, UK airlines. So we're taking first choice today as part of Dan Air Virtual. Dan Air Virtual contains several different uh, retro airlines and first choice is a, a great one of them. So I'm going to be operating this with Dan Air Virtual. So that's great. We are all logged in with the system on there and hopefully uh, that will run smoothly for us as well. Thank you all for coming along today. Um, we're back in the saddle, so to speak. Last stream, I had a bit of a, a nightmare with the computer and we couldn't get half the programs to work, if any. We couldn't get any of our airplanes to work. Uh, I'm not suggesting the airplanes are broken by any means. It's just something was going on with my computer. So I spent a bit of time when I could to clear out the, the simulator of, of some additional bits. Uh, I've updated everything I can think to update. Uh, I've got the uh, sim. I've tested it over and over again, on and off, different airplanes, load, shut down, load, shut down. Um, I've pretty much got everything, as far as I'm aware, working. Uh, we've got VATSIM. We are currently connected to VATSIM uh, right here. We are also, the overlay is working for you, which is an absolute bizarre um, thing, which I'll talk about en route as to how I fix that. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the, <laughs> the overlay programming. Um, and uh, we've got the latest Fly-by-Wire A32NX. This is the experimental version. That's always been my traditional version. So uh, that's the one we're going to go with today. Lots of new features. I've noticed some nice updates to the VNAV. Uh, I wonder, does anyone know, does Final App work? That question we shall see as we go. Uh, ILS and non-precision approach is available in Grenoble. And also, of course, we can fly in FPA mode, which the A32NX has had for a long time now, years now, literally. So uh, not worried about that. But it's got some great quality of life improvements. It was already one of the best sort of uh, user experiences, the A32NX, with the way the uh, the software was integrated, the printout of the weathers and so on. Uh, and it's, it's only improved from there. So looking forward to this one a lot. Flight time, not too long, about an hour and a half. Beautiful scenery in Grenoble. We're flying in the daylight, as you can tell. Um, that is my standard. Um, I might do a poll if you guys want to see a, uh, a stream in a, a night, at night time, but uh, I think Grenoble is worth seeing in the daylight. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you talk to the cloud bot, hopefully that will come to life and you'll be able to fly along should you choose to. Let me just check. Cloudbot should be online, so it might take a little while. It should come to life for you. Um, we're streaming both on YouTube and Twitch, of course. So jumping into YouTube chat, just to say hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Becky Davies. Good to see you again. Sammy, Nick K, great to have you here. Uh, Brian, James Atkinson's working. Good luck, James. I hope your shift goes okay. But uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. At least as Maggie says, back in the old saddle, are we? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, it's been a while since we've flown the A32NX and also back in the saddle after that last stream. <laughs> e -world, hello to you. Martin Skov, Peter, good to have you here, Ashen, Chick Point. And uh, Nikolai, thanks so much, Nikolai. Good evening to you. Uh, Nikolai says, good evening. Hope you are well. Good evening to you, Nikolai. Hope you're doing very well. Thank you for joining us. And thank you so much for the £5 uh, donation, really, or Super Chat. Really, really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's, it's very kind of you. Thank you for supporting the channel so much. And thank you for coming along today. I hope you enjoy the stream. And again, I hope it goes uh, <laughs> a bit better than last time. Coda... Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Um, and we've got Trevor. Wow. Uh, we've got Valstrom. Piano Learner. I hope you're doing well. Checkpoint. Good to see you. The Aviator, Mr. Martini, Leanne, uh, Stumcode, Birdman. Uh, does not yet work. Okay. Final lap not going to work. Uh, okay. Great. So we will do it FPA. No problem at all. Even better. A bit more work for me, but uh, it's it's uh, it's more satisfying, isn't it? Unless we end up doing the ILS. Um, The route we're going to take today is uh, in the Discord if it, Cloudbot doesn't decide to wake up in time. Uh, effectively, we're going via Sandba uh, and then November 859 to Honolulu, Upper Lima 612, Adebu, Romeo 28 Mulan, Alpha 3 Amani, and then direct Roa for the Roa 3 Alpha. Uh, this will all be on screen in just a moment. So you're welcome to fly along if you're on VATSIM and you fancy, uh, you fancy flying along as well. Um, so I'm in the pre-flight stage on VAMSYS, which is the client that Dan Air Virtual uses. So that should be good fun. And the airplane is cold and dark. Oh, of course, Twitch. Sorry, I mustn't forget to say hello on Twitch. Dougal, good to see you. Thanks for coming along and moderating everyone on Twitch. The Chaos, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Papa. They are, I hope you're all doing very well. Um, uh, the Chaos says, final app will come with the new FMS rework. Great. Okay, so fair enough. Absolutely no complaints here about um, about that. So uh, Dave says, hey, hey, you're going to do Gatwick to um, Grenoble tomorrow. Excellent. The one and only 690 <laughs> loves the uh, um, fly-by-wire. Uh, Wild Wombo, thank you for coming along and um, we're listening in at work. I hope we don't distract you too much, Wild Wombo, but thank you for joining us. <laughs> I hope you're doing very well. Um, 
Good. Right. So yes, I'm not on the Microsoft Flight Simulator servers. We are just on VatSim. So if you would like to fly along, you have to be on VatSim. Um, right. So uh, first of all, let's take the drone around for a little. Oh, there you go. That's good. Sorry, it's just the heating. My heating uh, has finally come on. We've been le leaving it off as long as possible, but it does come on in the evenings for a little bit. Um, so that's nice, even though just as the computer's starting to heat up, of course. Uh, but there we go. Um, so first choice, A320 Neo. They, of course, never flew this. First choice uh, is now merged into the, the TUI sort of brand. But uh, yeah, this is a really nice livery called the Starfish livery. It came about after Air 2000 became first choice uh, and then went to this one. I preferred the Tapestry livery, which was the Air 2000 one. But this color scheme is very popular. Uh, I think a lot of people, it takes them back to their childhood as well because it, it's a nice, fun, colorful 90s livery. You can imagine the uniforms the cabin crew would have worn um, and the bright colored seats and so on. Great fun. Uh, so yeah, it is um, looking good. Now, I don't know how much of the visuals have changed uh, with the A32 and X over time and I apologize I'm gonna misname this as the Phoenix I'm sure several times but yes I don't know how many visuals they've changed but I know that things like uh, the chocks have been added in which is great so uh, yeah now we have chocks sitting on the aircraft and the aircraft just so you know it would always be chocked on stand so that's what we've got here um, it is uh, and they look just like it that is exactly what they look like and yeah you would chock it the idea being that the pilots can release the parking brake you don't have to chock um, every wheel i don't believe i think they'll chock one side in the nose mm, that might not be true actually they might chock every wheel it's not something i see much <laughs> um from the flight deck when you're doing walk arounds you see it maybe it is every wheel no it is every wheel surely anyway that's a good one i'll have to keep an eye out for that but uh the latest edition visually was the satcom okay i don't have satcom enabled on this we're on gur um, okay enable it on the efb right so they're adding stuff through the efb amazing stuff amazing work as ever this this project it's it's quite amazing I think this livery works well on the Neo. I like the big uh, teal colored engines. Teal is a nice color in my opinion. And uh, yeah, this is a smart livery. By the way, if you join Dan Air Virtual, this livery is listed on their resources page. Um, but uh, yeah, looking good. Classic sort of Manchester flight. There's a Manta over there. You can see how Manta has, uh, has taken, in fact, Manta has a very similar color scheme to this. <laughs> we've only, uh, we've just stolen the, the lighter blue and the pink. Um, but yeah, there we go. For legal reasons, we did not steal it. <laughs> Those are the color schemes we've gone for. But yeah, looking great, looking lovely as always, and I'm looking forward to this flying. Danny Adams says, reminds me of the 90s, yeah, it does me too. We're in Manchester, so uh, of course we've still got this bug where we have two control towers. But there we go. Right, let's get the airplane turned on, warmed up. It's a chilly but bright day here in Manchester. So, um, a 32 x oh, a slight glitch there, but fingerprints now appearing on the screens, which is pretty good. I'm not sure why they're moving, but uh, there we go. <laughs> and no doubt that's something I've done wrong. So, my SimBrief username is in here. Uh, so we should have that sorted. The aviator says, how would you compare fly by wire to TOLIS, uh, even though they're different platforms? Uh, they're just so different. Um, the TOLIS is more complete still. It has all the modes, it has the failures, um, whereas the fly by wire just doesn't have that. That's, it's quite, that, it's that simple really. Um, yeah, so it's, it depends what you're prioritizing. This, of course, graphically is, is absolutely lovely and we get to enjoy Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it doesn't have the same, the same features, especially in terms of failures and systems depth. But they're working on it and they have some amazing details, amazing details. And I'm sure there's loads I don't know about. We'll find out today. Kelpie, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. Very kind. Kelpie says, I'm so tired. I've been studying for 12 hours, but glad I can take a break with your stream. Great, great. Yeah, I think after 12 hours, you, you can definitely have a break. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the stream and thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Kelpie, for the very kind $10 super chat. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, thank you for supporting the channel so much over the time. It's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, so thank you for joining us. Uh, let's do imports in brief data. Let's see how this goes. So we're going from Manchester to Grenoble, LFLS, alternate LFML. Uh, it's got a root code there, but uh, zero fuel at 63.1. Pretty reasonable zero fuel. Cost next 15, average wind, cruise out. Look at this stuff. Great. So that's all loaded in straight away into the EFB. Uh, and then we can pin charts and maintenance and checklists. Goodness me, very clever stuff. Um, so I'm now going to leave that alone. There is our uh, sim brief. So we'll take what we need from that. We won't actually need much of that. And then you can go to the ground and you've got services. So we started here so I can bring back the baggage truck, the catering. Uh, you can see the wheel chocks and cones, although those are automatic. Uh, you can't actually click them off. They'll stay there until we get the tug attached. So that's pretty good. Um, How do Crane says ramp services are very time centric. Every second you shave off saves the company money essentially. Yeah, they are indeed. They are indeed. Um, not sure why they chose the right as opposed to the left. But I think they just feel spending the time to check, check every wheel as a waste. I see. Yes. So 
people agree then that we don't have to do every wheel interesting interesting yeah there we go <laughs> um good some says i can't believe fly by is free no it is incredible so look at all of this now works just great and if we go outside um yeah there's the catering coming up at the back got the tug ready to go there which they often do they just sit there like that oh the sun low down sun like this there's somebody leaving lovely slow down sun looks great in this sim it really does doesn't it thank you again kelpie and thank you nikolai for those very kind super chats tor thanks for the subscription um good so they're gonna load on the bags downstairs we're already on the jet bridge uh so i'm gonna leave that alone and then we can go into fuel and start selecting our fuel um so we want a total of 7.8 tons of block fuel so back to ground services 7.8 and let's just do oh let's do real five minutes we can do that payload now why doesn't this let's see if we can import this there we go we can just click the import button oh, they've just thought of everything and then we'll do real 14 minutes yeah it'll take us that long so now we have current zero planned and then we click this little arrow and it starts boarding and it shows you the live cg as you go and you can actually hear it hear music and everything can you guys hear that <laughs> let me uh let me put the camera into the cabin I'm sure this isn't news to a lot of you. I know plenty of channels cover the uh, fly-by-wire and I've, I've been behind. <laughs> I hope that's the unlicensed music. <laughs> or copyright free music. <laughs> if you lock the copy door, sound to the muffle says the chaos. Excellent, excellent. The yeah, wants to change the music. <laughs> that's it. When you get this many options, you start to want more. I don't think I can open the cockpit door. Unless I'm missing something. Maybe there is a way to do that. Anyway, it's still absolutely brilliant. Oh, you've closed the cabin door. I see, I see. VNAV and LNAV work well. Yeah, I've seen some VNAV, so we'll have a look at the VNAV as we go. The one and only says, just started my VATSIM ATC training in Manchester. Excellent. There was a controller online in Manchester, but that's no longer... Oh, there is. Yes. There's an ATIS and ground. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, Shwalan says, didn't you do a whole series on YouTube? I did a whole series on the fly-by-wire, but um, I did look at some of the up a lot of the updates, but I also did a lot of just Airbus sort of stuff. Um, I, I have since then not not done so many videos with it or any so yeah it's time time we check it out and enjoy what it has to offer so uh what i wanted to do was also go to checklists because they have checklists in here now so copy prep gear pins and covers uh ah, okay these are still the uh relatively basic ones okay well we're going to use these anyway and see how they get along because i think that's good fun so let us because there is a whole what i should show you is there's a whole host of settings you can now do with sim options and so on um so you can choose whether you want things to be automatic or not um yeah it's quite something so for example lat long <laughs> we're using kilograms 8.33 on the rmp passenger signs are set to no smoking no portable is a new one although i still don't see that very often isis metric we're going to have hexapascal and inches and then we'll leave these at a thousand thanks for those follows red walks elvero edward uh, mad max as well thank you all for joining us today um yeah euro texan loves the cabin sounds yeah me too jay's worker says i'm at stand 31 doing the flight long excellent excellent welcome welcome and enjoy white theme hatch i liked it <laughs> i knew that'd be controversial um now simbridge i don't think i'm using for anything uh, so i'm not gonna worry about that but if we go to fly pad, we can change it to blue. Oh, look at the way that changes the rest of the screen. Okay, yeah, we'll go blue. That is better. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, good, 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 good. Battery life simulated. Now, how do you plug it in? I don't know. We might have to send it off if I can't work that one out. I'm sure someone knows. Uh, anyway, so as you can see, loads and loads going on here now. It's quite, quite amazing. Audio, audio music, announcements. PTU. Now I think the announcements are all done by we've got there's cabin announcements and then there's flight deck announcements from uh, V1 <laughs> which are quite funny quite long as well <laughs> like they're, the, they're the real deal they're great um, so anyway we're boarding we're fueling 
we need to turn the airplane on. You can't actually board in this state. So we go mouse switch is off, mode sector norm, and wiper sector is off. Weather radar off, and landing gear lever is down. Batteries checked, both were 25.5 into auto. All the sounds, we know the sounds are just super, super, super. They've been very good for a long time on this. That's all looking good. External power on. Yeah, the sounds on this are as good as anything, if not better in some areas. They put some serious effort in. Now the you can hear the yellow system complaining as you use a nose wheel. Just amazing detail. Let's get these screens brightened up for us. Fans running their tests, making lots of noise. Daniel B gonna try and come along. Excellent. You're very welcome. Now, performance calculator, as far as I'm aware, it's still just built in here. And I say just, I perfectly like it, um, but it's not quite as the real aircraft are done. So ATSU, AOC, init. We're going to initialize our flight. Hopefully it finds it. You have to use Simbridge for terrain and ND. Ah, right. That's what Simbridge is doing. Do I need to start up the A32NX app then? We'll see. Now... You do occasionally get a master warning during startup, but it's not quite that long. But uh, it does happen as the flight warning computers come online. Anyway, that's initialized. Uh, while we're here, let's grab an ATIS. For Manchester, departure, send. It's already running, hence the Wi-Fi. Thanks to Chaos. Perfect. Do you turn packs off while that's the gate, says Nikolai? No, uh, packs will, will leave on because if we have the APU bleed on, the packs work, and if we have it off, they don't. Um, so they can stay on for now because they're not running because the APU isn't running. And certainly the APU bleed isn't running either. Receive messages, ATIS. Look at this, brilliant. And you can choose all of this from the flypad where it gets its information from. This printing function is just still one of the neatest things. Because this is what you do with the real thing. You have it printed out and stuck there most of the time anyway. Good. I'm sure I can hear someone sniffing. <laughs> uh, right. Let's go back to aircraft status. Database is good. Oh, it runs out today. But that should be fine. Um, so that's all good. And there's no other database anyway. So that's data. Init A. Let's do our init request. We're due out in oh, 12 minutes. It's going to be a bit tight. 360, cost the next 15. Uh, with jet set 2646 not first choice jet set <laughs> no, no, that's what they use um we are hopefully oh no we're not aligned actually because we're getting ahead of ourselves here but anyway that's now loaded in so let's run through our flow so crew supply ground control test nav 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 although that has changed should have done that earlier than now it's gonna take me a while to get out of that habit <laughs> those arms we're not fueled up yet nav lights on strobe lights to auto we've got Anti-ice off, APU, uh, sorry, probe window heat off, air conditioning is all on and norm. Uh, and then we would do our electrical bite test, a bit hard to do in this context. So we will leave that alone. Fuel pumps will come on now. And engine fire tests. Nope. That is a recurring theme. How do I get to it? There we go. Good, APU. So let's get the master switch. One two three and up and running or get it started so just see how that looks on this screen yeah they've done a great job with this flap open remember when we got this first and none of this stuff worked it's just great uh michael john thanks so much for three pound 20 super chat see what you did there thank you michael michael says evening captain back to spiritual home indeed yeah thank you so much michael really appreciate it this is our spiritual home indeed uh the the h32 nx um, although I could say the Tolis is also another of our spiritual homes. <laughs> but yeah, we spent a lot of time in this and uh, it's it's just amazing. I absolutely love it. And especially as, you know, this is free and all the videos on the channel are free. So people can just enjoy it and, and get get to have some fun with the Airbus. So yeah, thank you so much, Michael. Really appreciate the super chat. Very kind. And Q8 Pilot, Q8 Pilot, great to see you. Great Pilot's very kindly super chatted $50. That's far too generous. Q8 Pilot, thank you so much. Uh, Kuwait Pilot says, really enjoy your streams, Captain. Thank you for your contributions to the flight simulation community. That's very, very, very kind of you. Kuwait Pilot, I'm sure you all know um, that Kuwait Pilot has a fantastic YouTube channel featuring lots and lots of video streams and uh, previews of new aircraft and, uh, and excellent videos and reviews of all sorts of aircraft and across loads of simulators as well. A great variety on there. So thank you so much, Kuwait Pilot. That is very, very kind. Uh, your contributions are greatly appreciated to the, uh, 
to the um, community as well with all the fantastic work. So great to see you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for that incredibly generous super chat. Really very, very kind. And uh, yeah, it's it's a real real treat to have you here today. We're, we are honored. <laughs> there you go. Kelpie says, Q8 pilot, you're awesome. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Sammy, hello to you. Matt, thank you so much uh, for coming along. Matt says, what do overnight flights do when data runs out at the end of the day? Is there a certain time you're allowed to use the out-of-date data? Uh, there'd be a second database pre-installed, so it won't ru you wouldn't run with data until the day it actually shuts down, um, typically. So that's so you'd already be on the new database. There would be like a bit of an overlap. But thank you again, Michael John, um, for your very kind donation. And thank you, of course, again to Q8 Pilot. That's really, really appreciated. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, we want Toby action. Okay. Well, don't you worry. It is here. We are going to have some Toby use today as well. I've spent a bit of time making sure that's up and running. Um, so, yeah, we will do that. That's uh, that's coming. I don't know if we'll do the eye tracking. I get mixed reviews for the eye tracking, but certainly the head tracking. Um, right. Well, we're about to miss our departure time, but that's no need to panic. <laughs> so, we probably we had our three minutes on the APU. It's all up and running now. Um, and you can see here, 103.40 EGT. I wonder if APU bleed on, the EGT rises. Excellent, just as it does in the real thing. Yeah, this is great stuff. APU gen is on 0% because we're not using it right now. Good. Uh, moving along, fuel pumps are on, APU test we've done, and then we don't need to do anything on this side, just check it's all in the right place. Middle panel now, let's set the Q&H is now set i do cheat nice high q and h hence the nice weather it's not so good down further south i can tell you that uh, but there we go 250 feet about right anti-skid nose steering is on uh, we'll put terrain on then seeing as it works with the sim bridge uh, apu we have looked at look at that yeah spot on great stuff landing gear lever was of course down moving along we're not going to fill the trims the radio is on unicom but we'll grab the correct one soon weather radar is off we'll put this to auto on the transponder um oh no, it should be on standby no there we go right as we're reporting on above, stand by on the TCAS. Good stuff. We'll get a squawk soon and we'll lock the flight to the door. Please press for traffic. This is Ryanair 2 Foxtrot X ray. Uh, correction 2 Foxtrot Echo. Uh, uh, James has got to go. Hopefully, around next one. We'll see you next time, James. Uh, Hopefully, indeed. 773 4344. Good to see you. As they say, this is my first Twitch stream Please with you. I've been watching yours for a year and a half now. Excellent. Thanks so much for coming along. I hope you enjoy the, uh, the uh, stream. Um, so we want to poll. The poll can only be on YouTube. Uh, so here we go. If we do live time, it'll be pitch black the whole flight. I really don't mind. It's entirely up to you. Now, I'm bad at asking these questions. I usually get it wrong. Um, so, live time, yes, night, no, day. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> see if that works. <laughs> Good. Right. Let the battle begin. One of them are more evenly based uh, polls so far. <laughs> uh, we're on stand 206, I believe. I don't have NVIDIA DLSS running. I tried it out. My graphics card isn't limited. It's barely being used here. Um, and it makes the, the numbers blurry, which I could not stand at all. So, yeah, I don't use the DLSS. I like it in some other games I've tried it on, but not here at all. Kelpie says, you can check out GSX and UDI stuff. I don't have GSX up and running. I have it half installed, hence I get the visual models, but it doesn't work properly. I don't know what happened, so I'm going to have to um, remove it. Um, okay, right. Pegasus is happy, Simpor, Simampor. So 206 left is a stand I'm on, apparently. Graham says, great to see you back in the fly-by-wire. These people have done a fantastic job. They really have. So now we're going to get on with our MCDU, do loading. So Manchester, Grenoble, is Jet Set 2646, 15, 360, wind requests. Does this work? Yes, it does. See, more and more of the answer is becoming yes. Auto aligned as it would on the Neo. That's great news. Um, good, so that's init A. Flight plan time then. Manchester, depart, there's our route. So, as you can see, if you want to follow along, Samba, November 859 to Honolulu, Upper Lima 612, which takes us all the way to Odebu, Romeo 28 to Mulan, and then Alpha 3 to Roa, and then the arrival. 
So I don't know what the weather's doing down there at the moment. So I'm just going to put in the ILS09 for now. And it's the Roa 3 Alpha arrival. Via. Ooh, which via are we going to use? I don't want to spend too long. Let's do that once we're on the way. Because I don't want to mess up the LNAV too much by fiddling with it. I don't know how robust it is these days. Um, it was pretty good before, but yeah. Aviad says, my GPU was barely used as well. Had to change window settings to make it actually use it. Oh, there you go. The EFE tells you the weather. Ah, yes, of course. So we go here. Uh, I can see in Grenoble. 3406. Yeah, pretty light. Boarding complete. Okay. Let's worry about that once we're en route. So we can tune in to... Does it have any... Does it tell us any like frequencies? Anything that... that I'm not sure what I'm really asking for it to do there. Yes, it does. I thought it did. Look at this. So we've got eight as we've already got. Um, we have information. Echo. And Echo had a Ladies Q and the flight deck. Oh, there's V1. <laughs> the first officer and cabin crew. I'd like to take this time to welcome you aboard our flight. We're just wrapping up some paperwork. One, two, three, zero. Here and waiting to see final numbers from the ground crew. Then we'll be on our way. Final numbers. Excellent. We're tuned ground as active. Nine, Q and H, one, zero, three, zero, ready for the start. Aircraft. Three, two, Tango Zulu, Stat Nine, pushing start approved, face south. More enjoyable. Please don't hesitate to ask. We'll start facing south. Easy. Three, two, Manchester, ground good. Evening, jet set 2646, stand 206 left. A320 near with echo QNH 1030, request clearance, Grenoble. Jet set 2646, Manchester, ground. Hello, I need you on an odd flight level. Can you accept 350 or 370? I will take 350, please. Just said 2646, thank you. You are cleared to Grenoble on the Samba 1 Romeo departure, runway 23 right, squawk 7573, uh, expect flight level 350. Thank you, cleared to Grenoble, Samba 1 Romeo from 23 right, squawk 7573, expecting 350, jet set 2646. Jet set 2646, read back is correct. Excellent, so we are going with 7... Oh. 7573. We're going with the Delta departure. 2 3 right. Samba 1 Romeo. Insert. And now, if we go to plan, there it is. Delta 473. Let me just adjust the audio. I had to turn it up last time, and actually, it's a bit loud now. Uh, yes, I'm here. I restart. I restart my uh, my uh, light when out of the game, in the game because I was on the uh, on a plane. Let's see if that works. Okay. Um, Delta four seven three. I don't see a okay. light plan for okay, okay, you okay. from your go right. right. You can so download the wind can, in other uh, phases. Ah, I need to separately. Do it. You should do it. All, uh, I can give you. Normally, does the wind all at once on the the real aircraft? Aha. Okay. Uh -huh. Great spot, thank you. Yeah. There we go, all the phases are in, that's good stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Great spot. Um, live weather was okay last time. Jimmy says, is TAA the better option instead of DLSS? Yeah, I think I've got TAA on. Yeah, I think that's what I've got. Tommy Two Tents, good to see you. Um, yeah, there we go, there we go. Alex Van the Powers, good to see you. Michael John says, it was my pleasure to support the channel in my own small way, sir. Long way the channel continue. Michael John, that's very kind of you. Thank hey, you again for your chat. Request really appreciate it. And thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the, the channel. The song, one right yeah, on that's you. an ever-changing volume. Yeah, I'm sure it was quieter yeah, last time. Zero, three, good. So boarding is complete. We've got our number. clearance. we put in the departure. So now let's just see. I want to use the charts in here. KLM 133, aircraft 7, Boeing 738. Now, does it that have number, I'm not sure. Anyway. Check your chart. Uh, I believe you're on can stand we just five zero, but uh, please confirm. 
I've not used this system yet, so let's try it out. Is it better than the Navigraph app is the question to answer. Well, it knows where we are, so we'll pin the airport charts. We'll pin the parking stands chart. That doesn't know where we are, but that's quite normal. Um, I don't think we're actually on 20. Oh, no, we are. 206 left. We're up there. That's good. And then Sid, we've agreed now. Samba 1 Romeo, which is down here. And there we are. So out three miles, right turn 274. Five miles, left turn around Tabley, stopping at 5,000 feet initially. Jet aircraft only, 250 knots below 100. So that's all normal. No other speed limits to concern us. So 5,000 feet in the window. Good. So we've done flight plan. Secondary is not active still. Um, so diffs um, D I F S. R yeah, nothing to do in there. Let me get this right. And it B, there we go. Okay, let's get the weights in. So we are boarding complete. We know that. Which means if we go here, we are 0 fuel weight 61, 61 1, 35 6. Now that's interesting, that's quite an RCG. Plot fuel 7.8. That's in. 68.7 takeoff weight. Wind. We've got the phases in. Hopefully it will calculate the rest of it. Um, Kellen, yeah. not yet. Fuel. Right. Seven, eight, yeah. So that's all done. Plan already knows you can just hit the LS key next to zero fuel CG. Oh, there we go. Of course. I forgot it does that. Uh, there we go. So arriving, we've got two tons extra, which is what I actually took as extra fuel. So a bit of a pessimistic plan. We should really have a little bit extra over at the top of that. But there we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Actually, no, that's fine because our contingency is up here. Yeah, no, that's all good. That is all good. Um, so yeah, so fuel's loaded. Passengers are loaded. Let's go. That's diff in it B. So diff strip uh, performance. Right. It'll be flap one out of Manchester. I'm going to flex to 69 because it's nice cold air. And then we'll just put the speeds in. Ooh, seems quite low for flap one. 136, maybe not. Maybe not. And it is a Neo. Cleaner 223. Yeah, so we're not actually that heavy. We're not as heavy as it might consider. Good. So that's all ready to go. Uh, let's get rid of the ground power. Passenger signs can come on. What does it sound like in the cabin? That's great. All those droop controls as well. Love it. Good. Right, let's do the checklist then. Uh, I'll just do pushback. So pushback system on. Don't enable any others. I will call the tug. And now you can see here, this is where we are. It's amazing. This is so good. Information echo QNET 1030. Yeah, that's all good. Very kind message there from the EasyJet. <laughs> Thank you. you if you're watching the stream, we uh, appreciate it. Very zero, kind of you. Three, really glad you enjoy it. M. Jones says, Kellen, hey there, is the flight pad a new feature on Microsoft Flight Simulator? No, this is, so this is new for the A32NX. This is what they put their work into. Kellen1033, just crazy, uh, good evening to you. that you are using the Sonics 1 Romeo departure and you have QNH 1030. Right, well, we're pretty much ready to go then. QNH 1030 on the Sonics 1. So let's run our one. checklist. Right departure from Romeo's this one. So one, gear pins zero, and three, covers three, three. Thank you, are correct. removed. Fuel quantity seven point eight tons, which is what we wanted. Seat belts are on. ADs are in now. Bar F one zero three zero. That's done. Before such checklist, parking brake is on. Takeoff speeds and thrust at one thirty five, one forty. We know we got flex sixty nine. That is done. Windows are closed. Beacon to come on. So let's get our clearance. Jet set two six four six. Request push start. Stand two zero six left. Easy three two Tango Zulu, nothing further. Unicorn one to two decimal eight. Bye bye. Over to Unicorn, easy three two Tango Zulu. Thanks. Bye bye. Jet set two six four six stand to two zero six left. Uh, push and start approved. Push and approved two zero six left. Jet set two six four six. Now I'm going to guess we're just going to face sort of south, as it were. There are some a lot of airplanes around us, but let's do it. Uh, so yeah, so once that's approved, we'll put the beacon on. I'll set the transponder to auto, and you would check the thrust levers are closed, and the windows are closed, and then you would run the checklist. So parking brake, which is on, takeoff speeds and thrust set, windows doors closed, beacon on. This isn't 
an Airbus checklist. This is I don't know who, where they've got this from, but it's uh, it's it's it seems like a good way to get it so that this all works for you as opposed to uh, anything else. <laughs> Um, good. So that's all good. Now we're going to get back to our pushback. I'm going to release the parking brake and I'm going to press play. Easy, uh, 409 ready for push and start. Easy 409. And 31. Push and start. And then to change direction, I can Charlie. use this lever um, here. It's amazing. And it shows me. The live position on there. November, so we'll keep it going slow. Some drivers in some parts of the world are quicker than this, but uh, that's pretty slow. A bit faster. Let's get the engines up and running. So starting engine number. Let's do engine two. Yeah, we'll do two Push engines. For this. So starting two. We've got pressure. Number two. And then the shoulder will turn up out of the bag and the water and remember separately. Run a proper PA going on. <laughs> two nine stand five one. Stand by. Very American uh Run a six two nine German crew, which is perfectly fine. You can use your stick also. Face west. Uh, we'll face west. What does that do? Oh, I made a mess of it. Delta four seven three. Oh, I can't make it. Oh, you can make it turn. I see. I see. Nah. I, I actually prefer uh, backwards play. Uh, again, sorry. Uh, you want to send me a message? Oh, backwards. There we go. Uh, yes. I, I quite like that. I think you can uh, send me a direct message. And then now we do direction. And look at this. It draws. You have a bit more speed on. Oh, I did last time I used it. It drew like a line showing you where you'd end up. So you don't actually need to go to the outside ones. You can do it all on here. So let's get a tight turn in. Look at this. And it looks just, yeah, it's really nice. Stick for speed, relative turn. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> that is an A380, yeah. Squeezed in next to a 330. <laughs> so now we can just go backwards. Oh no, that's the speed. Ah, don't do that. Let's pause. <laughs> We're in a good place there. Parking brake goes on. Disconnect the tug. So there we will disconnect. I don't know if that's animated or not. Yes, it is. Look at that. Excellent. And we'll get engine one up and running. So we've got pressure starting one. That's going. Look at the terrain. Everything. Oh, this is great. I've got high hopes for the 380 as well. Manchester yeah. ground. Good evening, Blumac 69011. Off goes the tug. It does usually visually display. Oh, we had to click it. There we go. Uh, Blue Max uh, 6911 to the ground. Blue Max 6911, good evening. Stand 55, you make a call board. Unit 1030. Request now for clearance to depart, please. Yeah, Blue Max 737-800, Blue Max 6911. Blue Max 6911, thank you. You are Kate Prague on the Sonics 1-1, your departure on a 2 3 right. Stroke 1425. Right, we'll say that they waved to us, Clip I didn't see it, but there we go. <laughs> uh, that departure is... Departure on a 2 3 right. Score 1425, Blue Max 6911, thank you. I might have missed the available message. There it is, avail. Blue Max uh, 6911, we'll go back to norm. AP bleed off. Manchester Ground evening version one two India Mike. Uh, Anti ice not required. Beautiful day here. Crossing on a car to Antonio. Send to the roadstream. Flaps the wall. Version one two India Mike Manchester Ground. And CG. Uh, report We're your. We're going to go to CG back. now. Thirty five three is pretty ass. Version one two India Mike. Version one two India Mike. So we need to run that forward. Yeah, it's pretty pretty near the back. That's okay. We can handle that. Now, let's use their Echo checklist. After checklist, anti ice is off. Ecam status, we're looking for any status measures there, is checked, and that's all clear. Pitch trim 35, rudder trim neutral. Antonio, that's complete. Three, right, Next is taxi, uh, one, which will do during the taxi. Version, First choice, that's the throwback airline. It is indeed, though. Yeah, we have fun with these uh, those older airlines on the channel. Five, six, one, four, version, How's the audio? Is it okay? Uh, is the, is that seem too loud or too quiet for you guys? Oh, 
very quiet. All stations, all station, new 80s Foxtrot, QNH remains 1030. Indeed, Rambit, first choice is now two. 409, Taxi Hot Point Juliet 1, runway 23 right, via Echo, Delta, Papa, Kilo and Juliet. Let's see if that works. You can enable PTU Bark in the EFP settings, uh, right, but no, it's not all from the Exactly, Bravo, that's exactly Papa, right. Kilo, Juliet, it's a nice, I quite like having it, but no, it's not uh, not there. Juliet one. You, it's just too far away. One. In this seat, you'd hear it. Jet set 2646, request taxi. Jet set 2646, taxi over point Juliet 1, runway 23 right, via November Charlie, Echo, Delta, Papa, Kilo and Juliet. Taxi Juliet 1 for 23 right by November Charlie Echo Delta Papa Kilo Juliet. Jet set 2646. Oh dear, this is going to be a challenge. I'm glad we got to both engines. We've only done this we've done this once or twice out of here. I remember we got the wrong taxiway last time. I followed Runner somebody else. <laughs> two, no, no, taxi now I think one. we should have our pin chart. Look at this, there we go. Uh, Golf and Juliet. Ah, uh, you can't scroll on the map though. So I guess it's this, there we go. But you can click and drag. So November Charlie. It's not really good enough, is it? We need parking stands to start with. Oh, that's the wrong chart. Oh, no, it's not. There it is. Right, we're in November Charlie. So November Charlie, Echo Delta. So November Charlie, November Charlie, Echo, Delta. Papa, <laughs> Kilo, and then that takes us to Juliet. Okay. I wish we'd appeared on this chart, but this is always the case with the Navigraph chart. Brakes released, lights are on, it's clear on the left, it's clear on the right. Let's go. Air one, 1157, you are cleared, um, stand by. So Call first right here. Uh, this is, I, I used to have the Maco simulations, I think it was, but now this is back to default. This is not going to be uh, a good France, result. 1, 1, 5, 7, anyway, we'll do a brake check. That's all good. We'll right. go full screen on the chart to help drink taxis as well. Ah, very good. Wish they could just say follow on the greens. Yeah, follow the greens is great. France, one, one, five, seven. So I think we're on the member Charlie because we were here. So member Charlie, right, uh, six, and then it's two, left. Nine, uh, nothing further. Monica, and we'll let it turn into the decimal, eight, bye -bye. In game nap panel. Yes, I don't. Uh, mine isn't updated. I don't think mine's still on the older one. So I need to give that a go at eight. Rambit says, if you will, when you stream next on a flying in the US, do it in an American West livery on the Airbus 2020 We can do that, I'm sure. Last one we did was Pan Am. We had lots of trouble getting the A310 to work. I've been fiddling with the A310 since that stream. And frustratingly, it works again. It, it was just that day. There's a bug where you lose control of the throttles and yoke, and it, it stopped doing it. I don't know why. Strangely, it's the Phoenix that I can't get to work right now, so I'm going to reinstall that and see if I can help it along. Right, we don't want Lima, which is the first left, so we're going to take Echo right and then go on to Papa. I'm going to do all the checks when we're over there. Let's get with number one wrong with departure, departure when we do three right, walk six, four, six, seven, can you walk your break? How do you get to Sliver, Colorado? Yeah, Colorado would be good, so we should do that. I like the sound of that. Stephen says it'd be great if you could draw your taxi. You can in the real aircraft. I must admit, although on the real iPads or fly pads, but I must admit I never do. It could change, you know, so I, I don't tend to bother. You're best off looking outside for the signs. Unfortunately, in this default airport, we haven't got the proper signs. So I'm going to say this is Papa. However, it could be this little one here. It's just the signposts aren't here. No, I think we're okay. Because that one's back on ourselves. No, I think we've done it. I think we've done it. So, Papa. And then we're going to follow that traffic. Someone arriving. Excellent. This is great. Love that sim. Mexico. Yes, we should do Mexico as well. That would be fun. Now, here's a whole load of signs. 
So we're going down here. Bit of a right turn. And then it's going to be kilo. So second left for kilo. It's all clear. It's all clear. Following that traffic in front. Slowing it down for this one. These 90 degree turns, you know, 10, 10 knots is really where you want to be. You can do gentler turns at 15 quite comfortably, but this is a full 90 really. Because remember, someone could be standing up at the back here preparing their galley, doing safety demos and so on. It's the camera crew really you're thinking about. Not re It's not quite passenger comfort as much as camera crew standing up. Good. Right, this is then going to follow along and it will become Juliet much further down. So for those of you not familiar with Manchester, We are now here, so Kilo shortly turns into Juliet, all the way down to Juliet 1. So let's run a flight control check, so full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral. Now I don't know if you can hear that high pitched noise, it's one of the hydraulic systems and then when you run the controls on those with steering it actually modulates it, it wobbles up and down, just brilliant. Zulu and Zulu Orange. As the spoilers deploy, just great. Really, really down, amazing one detail. Zero three via Bravo Oops, Delta pushing back there. Anyway, we'll say we've done the rudders yeah, as well. I don't have the disconnector sign, so we'll put auto brakes to max. We will put the weather radar on, put your windshield to auto, I'll just go to auto, GCS to auto, transponder to TARA. Oh, there you go. That triggers a, a V1 call. Very good. <laughs> or V1 PA. Kevin, ready. Take a complete test. Test. Back to birth age. Looking good. Oh, they were quick. No messing around there. Good. So let's run the taxi checklists. So flight controls checked. Flaps config. One for Seth Green versus one in there and blue. Radio prediction wind shear on auto. Engine motion like norm. EKMMO takeoff. No blue. Checklist complete. Got to be careful because it saves your last rudder input and then, well, in my setup anyway, it saves the rudder input. So as I drag right click, it would just keep doing what my rudder was last doing. Bye bye. Have a good stream. 1228 Jet Set 2646. Thanks so much for your help. Thanks. Have a good day. Very nice controller. So we get back to comms and now we can just go Unicom. Genius. That is genius. <laughs> How do they come up with this stuff? So we have to make our own progress here. TCAS is working nicely. I did a video on the TCAS when it arrived in the fly by wire. So we're going to make our way in between the traffic. It looks like just one on arrival within seven miles at least so we'll see they'll land traffic in front do we know the traffic in front where they're going breaker sets oh this is just great oh there you go that's jay's worker in front excellent <laughs> Mark says, hey all, been here since the start, been cooking eating. Excellent, I hope you're having a good dinner, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Nice. Lots of traffic on, going around today. Well, not going around, but flying along today. Why does traffic go Seven, five, five, ten miles to right Manchester. Oh, someone else is on final, 10 miles. So our colleague in front could probably get it. Well, they could get away with it, but it's quite a long taxi round. You've got to get south and then back north again. So hopefully they make their way soon. Or they'll actually, uh, depends what they feel like. This does happen in single runway operations in Manchester. It does get busy. Traffic is 778, is vacating 22 right. There's the easy jet, just landed. And uh, traffic. 409 lining up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Jay's worker's taking the challenge. Running the gauntlet. I'm going to release my brakes. We're not going anywhere until um, <laughs> the traffic's landed anyway in front. So 
We shall see. There they go. Seven miles for the traffic coming in. Should be no problem at all. No problem at all. I'm going to hold position here. We'll let that other aircraft land at 2 3 right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, go 755. We're going to maintain a pretty high pass approach speed, so that should be alright. You won't be waiting long. There you go. Everyone's working out together. I wonder what they're flying. I'm maintaining a high approach speed. Let's look them up. Um, I did have FS LTL model matching, and I don't understand why it's not showing up. Even VPilot told me it was looking at it all when I loaded up VPilot, so I'm not entirely sure what's happened there. So what's on final? It is coming from Copenhagen. It's an A320. A UKV. UKV, what's that? Anyway, there we go. I have indeed flown to Glasgow. Yeah, no, I don't know why I'm, I thought my model matches was up and running. I had it working for a while, and it, for some reason it stopped working. So, <laughs> of all the things I, I, I checked, I didn't check the model matching, uh, and perhaps I should have. However, I, someone mentioned earlier about Just Flight's traffic coming, and I, I want that to... I want to try that out, so I might remove the A32... Uh, sorry, the fly-by-wire stuff for now, or the FSTL stuff for now, and then um, we can use the uh, Just Flight one. Because as far as I can tell, the Just Flight one will work with that sim from the, the, the brief I saw on their development page, so that would be great. Uh, right, I'm going to end the poll now uh, before we get going, and it's finished as no, not real time, 51% to 49 that is 282 of you voted over 28 minutes. Um, uh, yeah, we go. It's just gone to 52 for no. So we're sticking with day by the tiniest of margins. The tiniest of margins. So I'm afraid that's where we're going. <laughs> that's the worst result for me because, of course, it means I'm upsetting half the people. <laughs> but there we go. Um, we'll go daylight today, and then I will do a night stream. Uh, I want to do one. There's that traffic in. And they're lining up in front. Excellent. Ah, maybe I need to redo the VMR file. Maybe I do need to redo that file assignment because of the way my hard drive moved to place. Maybe it's not finding it. Jay's Rekka says, sorry, I should have taken off. No problem at all. No, no. Uh, the amount of times... Um, so this is our colleague in front talking about whether they should have taken off. The amount of times I have um, been like this in a real situation and you, you, you sit there and there's seven miles to go and air traffic won't let you line up and you get frustrated, but it doesn't actually matter... Uh, there's nothing you can do about it and it just depends on the airport they'll have their own reasoning there might be traffic on departure that's blocking your route so you can't go anyway you know now i talk about it very calmly right now i can assure you it's <laughs> frustrating at the time especially when you're running late or you're running into discretion or uh, the airfield you're trying to get to is going to close but that's just how it goes sometimes and ultimately we're talking about 60 seconds here the stream's been running for 53 minutes um, and that's typically you know we'd have been on an airplane for this long so the, the seconds aren't actually as important as that we become convinced they are sometimes. There we go. So a colleague in front is going. There's no one else out on approach. No one else has called. So I'm going to announce lining up. Manchester traffic. Jet set 2646 lining up 23 right. Right, turn the approach. Lights on. And there goes our colleague in front. So we'll follow them pretty closely behind. Now there is a time limit. Sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes four minutes. Probably as we're doing exactly the same route. We'll need a bit of a gap, so we'll build that in just in case there's any controllers en route. I don't want to be uh, messing around. Richard says, totally unrealistic, unsubbed. Augmentat <laughs> says, don't worry about upsetting us, I voted yes. No, it was my second choice. There we go. <laughs> so clear on approach, clear on the right, traffic is gone. Rotate law, still working nicely, beautifully in this. Thank you again, by the way, to Q8 Pilot for that very, very kind super chat. Really, really, once again, appreciate it. So two minutes between aircraft is normal, but if we're on the same route, sometimes it's increased to four minutes if we're going to go exactly the same way. That's not a great lineup. I need to get used to this nose steering again. Beautiful day here, though. Can't believe it. Thanks, Chris, for the subscription, and that's so for the follow.
Uh, between landing and takeoff, the time is actually different. Landing aircraft can land on top of each other, not on top of each other, basically one after the other. There's no different distance. There is a distance on approach they have to be separated by, uh, but it's very short, especially in some places that will reduce them themselves. Well, we have no link after Samba. There we go. So we'll build in, let's build in two minutes. Uh, we'll do three. Let's compromise. We'll do three. It should be four, but there we go. Good. So we are setting off to Grenoble. It's taken us 55 minutes, but we did push back only about 10 minutes late, so that's not bad going. Let me just check the Pegasus has knows that yet. It thinks the flaps are set to position two. They weren't, so hopefully it does know what's going on there. Um, anyway. Ah, oh, we'll do two minutes. Let's go. Manchester jet set two six four six taking off two three right. We got people waiting there. <laughs> Start the clock. Ah, oh, what I didn't do. Typically, was that what I said I'd do? And use the Toby. So there we go. Right, half side stick. Clock's running. Fifty percent M ones. Holding it on the toe brakes. Brakes released. Two clicks forwards. Man, Flex 69, SRS runway. Order thrust is blue. Right. Love the sounds. Sounds are so good on this. H to 100, stick to neutral. V1 rotates and those will shimmy I would that's close enough to being reported for me again excellent positive uh, rotation there but rotation law positive climb gear up and away we go we are on the way to Grenoble Long off takeoff roll, but the speeds have worked nicely, so that's good. The Neo has slightly lower speeds, so it does make sense that the rotation was a bit lower than I expected. They claim it's got better low speed handling. I'm not sure where they got that idea, but Airbus knows what they're doing. I wish I'd used that for taxi. So sorry. So many things going on. Right turn. Levers back one click, thrust climb, climb, auto thrusts. I love doing this. And then you'll see the other pilot sitting there with the sort of the world whipping by outside. It reminds you how fast you're going when you do that, rather than looking at the big blue outside the front window. Handling, I've got to say, is just as good as it was when we left it last. This is a lovely machine. They've done a great job with the the, the, the bit they named themselves after the fly by wire. It's lovely. Auto trim running. As we accelerate. About the airspeed, flaps to zero. Disarm the ground spoilers. And get rid of the nose lights. Ah, oh, that's annoying. It. The Toby is better than this when you're having a microphone. There you go. As soon as I move the microphone out of the way, it works. <laughs> so one thing I, I didn't think about that <laughs> but when you've got a, I've got a big well actually a normal sort of streaming star microphone in front of me and it's uh, it's a great microphone but it does sit in the way of the eye tracker speed up star does a bit to go let's go autopilot one there we go that one's sent off there tracking for now and round we go oh, beautiful day here so how was that we're on the way Ramses is working with us when you start moving stream loses quality. Ah, that's a shame. That is a shame. Oh no, it seems okay for Mark. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Why do we need to hold M1 at 50% for takeoff? Some code says. We do it to stabilize the engines out. So the engines are big, they're slow to accelerate. You saw how I put them to 50% and we sat there for ages because they're they have a bit of inertia. It takes time to accelerate a jet engine. So 
We set them to 50 to let them accelerate at once. If you just went from idle to full power, one of them, depending on the conditions, the crosswinds and so on, might accelerate quicker than the other. And if you have that happen and one of them's at full thrust and one of them isn't, you could drag yourself off the runway at low speed because you've got no flight controls to counter it because you've got no air going over the flight controls. So that's why we stabilize at 50 because from 50 to a takeoff thrust is a much smaller gap and the engines are more responsive at that sort of speed so they tend to accelerate together. Even so, in strong crosswinds, we still do that slowly and carefully. So that's what we're doing there, 50% to make sure they don't. Because if you just went from idle to full power, the chances are one of them, depending on the wind and everything else and the age of the engine, is going to go quicker than the other and then that could drag you off the side very quickly. Uh, we set the clock on takeoff so we know how long we've run the engine. However, I have failed to do that today because... Has it been four minutes since we took off? Did I redo it? Maybe it has. Uh, we do that uh, in case of uh, an engine failure. We need to know how long we've run the engine at takeoff thrust four. So we can only run it at five minutes at takeoff thrust with two engines, and we can run it at 10 minutes if, if one of the engines fails. So we're just making sure we know how long we run the engines at takeoff thrust. Right, we were told to go to an odd level, 350. So let's put that in the window. Just come open climb, set standards, outlook 350. And now we're going to get, unbelievably, a level off arrow. Tailwind today, finally. Once we get a tailwind on one of the streams, that's good news. Nikolai asks, is it worth putting cost next to zero above 10,000 if your primary cost next is low, like eight? <sighs> I wouldn't. It depends on the airlines. I can't say it's going to make much difference. Some airlines think that lower cost nexus do make a difference in the climb. Some, some don't seem to care. <laughs> Just checking the bit rate. So all my uh, life support signs say everything is okay in terms of bit rate and connection and lost frames. So unusually, certainly. But um, just keeping an eye on. Yeah, it seems everything seems okay on my end. The knocking sound when accelerating. Is that during the takeoff roll, Alexander? There's a knocking sound. What that's meant to be is the nose wheel hitting the centerline lights. Uh, and that's exactly what it sounds like. You go, doo, 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 doo. Uh, we try to avoid it because it's not great to smash into them. They're pretty big and heavy metal things, as you can hear, but uh, it's not the end of the world if you hit all of them, frankly. Fly by Wire now has top of climb and top descent markers in the MCTU as well. Yes, there we go. It's great. Thank you, uh, Ben. There it is. Leveling up just before Woody. Or not Woody, Wood. Uh, and there's a top of climb in there. Progress. Optimum 385. Actually, so I told him 350 because uh, we were we planned at 36, but we needed an odd level, which makes sense. I don't know why Simbri gave us even actually for that one, unusually. But there we go. Planned at 36. I said 35. The reason I just instantly replied 35 was because we can always ask for 37 later, uh, and chances are will be heavy. Uh, so there's no reason we couldn't go to 35. It just burns a little bit more fuel, but for a thousand feet, realistically, not going to make much difference. Right, there's 10,000 feet. Landing lights off. Seatbelts off. Airplane's accelerating nicely. Fuel hasn't poured out of the wings. We've still got 7.1 tons. We've burnt 700, so that adds up to 7.8, which is what we expected to have. We saw that we're going up to 3.6 was the plan. We've changed that to 3.5. Optimum's 3.8, so I'm actually going to go to 3.70. Unless told otherwise. Let's put in Grenoble there. 544 miles to go. And we have airports. Uh, we can leave constraints on that side or whatever the FO would like. I'm using experimental version high fly Experimental today. It's always my favourite one to use, really. There's not a separate FCOM for the Neos. There's just different modifications, so you filter them depending on which one you're doing. So you could argue it's, it's separate, but yeah. MSHR, very kind. Thank you for your 99 cent super chat. Really appreciate it. Um, there's no label or anything there, but, uh, but thank you so much, MSHR. Really, really kind of you. Thanks for supporting the channel. Try, uh, 
indeed we are using the experimental version red scratch off sticker experimental oh there we go so some you can tell so yeah this is experimental the um and somebody just said let me just check Google says Twitch is smooth, audio is 5x5, five five. that's excellent. Uh, and the chaos says it's nice how you can hear the solenoid engaging in holding the stick when you turn the on on the autopilot. Yeah, you can hear it. And it's it's very loud at the real aeroplane. It's the first sign you get that the autopilot's dropped out is this noise. So you can tell that the other pilot's disengaged it, or worse, it's disengaged on its own by that first. Um, but yes, apparently the VNAV arrows are only an experimental version so if you're not using experimental you might not see those so don't panic if that's the case that that'll be why thank you again uh, mshr for the uh, the tip appreciate it oh there you go ben says it was only sunday since they added the top of scent countdown in the perfect goodness me it's been hard work hard work for them they've done an amazing job can't wait for their 380 if they've got these systems working like this all on their own the only thing I've noticed is my screen seems to refresh slower now than they used to. This I don't know if that's my settings in the sim or whether there's something I need to change in the aircraft. George, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Let me just check everything's working here. Okay. The Neon Tree says, Hello, an engine stabilized follow-up question. Is it a huge strain on the brakes when you have engines running at 50% for a moment? I always wonder how much brakes can hold. No, it's not a huge strain. The brakes aren't... Remember, there's no... Brakes take energy out of the aircraft. So we're talking here about on the takeoff, we set 50%. Look at those clouds. Wow. That's great. Uh, on takeoff, we're setting the uh, thrust to 50% M1 letting the engine stabilize and then releasing the tow brakes. Now that wasn't always the case. There was a period where Airbus said, um, release the tow brakes, set 50% M1, then set power, but that changed. Now, it doesn't strain the, it might strain the brakes, but there's no energy in the airplane. The energy is being wasted by the engines. They're just blasting air around and it's pulling on the brakes, but they're not heating up because of course the airplane still, the brakes only heat up aware when they're trying to take energy out of the airplane, but there's no energy in the airplane. It's not moving, it's stationary. So all you're doing is just restricting its ability to move. It's like putting it against chocks. They don't heat up or wear if you ran the engines on them. They would just sit there. Um, so, so yeah, so that's the difference there. So, it, it, no, there's no issue doing that. Jay's Rocket's passing 20,000 feet in front of us. Excellent. Uh, example was taken, says you should mention that those arrows are only available on experimental version. There we go. Thank you. And it says, hey, does the real A320 give you top of descent or do you have to calculate it yourself like in this sim? So, um, as we were just discussing, if you get the experimental version, there is now a top of descent marker. But the real aircraft most certainly does tell you a top of descent marker as well. There it is. Look at that. And that's even with an incomplete flight plan. The tow list didn't even get that for a while. They, they didn't have... The, the predictions wouldn't work if the flight plan was incomplete. So, very good job. Very good job. I would check it myself anyway because uh, the, the coded top of descent, or the one it's calculated, sorry, not coded, it's calculated this, could be based on some other piece of coding you're not familiar with or that you don't think you'll actually fly. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't rely on it entirely. Um, my classic, I've got a video exactly on this topic, but yeah, 120 miles from where we are, if the winds are fairly normal, I want to be thinking about descending. And it says, oh, nice, I need to download the experimental version then. Sorry, just joined if you already talked about it. No, we were just discussing it. That's very welcome, very welcome. Thanks for joining us. I mean, I'm way behind, so I'm talking about stuff here that uh, most people in the chat know about. Google is a big fan of the 320. <laughs> uh, the fly-by-wire 320, yeah, it is excellent. Excellent, excellent. Ben says, A380 MCDU has been built from the ground up, so I guess it would have lots of the same features. Excellent, that's going to be good. Yeah, MSHR, you're right. I do need to sort out the playlists. Yeah, I need to work. There's a lot of videos for me to go through to do that. I must do the playlists. Mike Garza, thanks for these streams. Your videos have taught me so much about operating the Airbus flight me. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming along to say so. Uh, Q Luca says, would you say the A32NX cockpit is accurate in particular the glare shield? You know, I think it's good. Yes. It looks slightly different to the Phoenix and the Tolis. 
and I don't know why I couldn't tell you what that what dip what the difference is I think some of the fonts perhaps are a little bit smaller now whether that's closer or less accurate I don't know <laughs> because of course we would have to compare it to the real thing and as a guess I would say the fonts look a bit small but I need to compare I, I wouldn't like to suggest that is definitely the case um, so yeah very hard to say maybe the other ones aren't perfectly accurate but they look we like the look of them in the sim I don't know I don't know Hadruken says the white noise during the flight is one of the most relaxing sounds from experience yes agreed it's great my sim display I have vsync on and I try and keep it running at uh in the low like 30 as a maximum the reason is if I go higher than that you'll start seeing problems on the streaming end my computer can't put out those streams at that speed you get the refresh rate of the screen oh sorry right so clicking the same thing so there's a satcom there we go i won't fiddle with it now i don't want a satcom it's in uh i don't know if, how many of you read fate is the hunter but we, we talk about it from time to time and there's a quote in this, early on in that book you know the pilot says uh how he's flying one of the the newer i think it was b25 i said but this one is slower than the others because of all the bits that have been strapped onto it by engineers to make it better <laughs> and I, I always think of that when I see the sat top just glued to the top of an airbus beautiful A few questions here then so speed here under the airspeed is the Mach number only displays above Mach 0.5 but yep there it is Mach number um, and yes graphic settings from Microsoft Flight Simulator I have on medium which for the refresh rate of the screens which works fine on the other aircraft so I suppose my point is it, it doesn't look quite the same here I wonder if it's the clarity is a bit better here so it stands out a bit more I don't know I think I'll get used to it as we fly but there we go uh, James, good to see you again. I hope it works going well. Uh, in terms of the Phoenix, no, my Phoenix is not working. And I've tried running the Phoenix app before loading the sim as well, and I still couldn't get it to work. So I need to reinstall. I think reinstall is just the, the clear, easy path there, um, which I'm quite happy to do. So I will do that, and we'll get the Phoenix back up and running. Uh, there we go. The Phoenix doesn't use that setting uh, because it renders its display outside the sim. So maybe that's why I'm feeling the difference, because we only fly two Airbuses in this sim. So that would make sense then. Yeah, thanks, Chaos. So perhaps I should up that. But I know it has quite a penalty on frame rates. <laughs> uh, I remember that from earlier. And like I say, I, I noticed it when I first jumped in this aircraft after flying the Phoenix for so long. But now, already, sort of getting over it. Looks fine. <laughs> Cruise altitude we're going to, Ranbir, is 3.7. Optum 3.9. Recommended max 3.9. 37 would be absolutely fine. So yeah, you're absolutely right. What am I doing? 37. <laughs> there we go. Cruising 370. Sean Power says, how do you get the sounds you do in sim? I can't get the sound. Which sounds are you talking about, Sean? A lot of these sounds are because this is the fly-by-wire. You must download the fly-by-wire, which I can't recommend enough. Fly-by-wire A32NX is absolutely the one to have. MK2 Matt says been watching while at work home time now thank you for the stream you're very welcome thank you for coming along 
Example was taken says the reason glare shield looks different is because it's the Asoba model which is not 100% accurate will be fixed eventually. There we go. So yeah, this one is slightly off. Slightly. Totally, you know, not even, not even slight issue. I think part of it is this, the angle looks off. Someone did say it's the angle. The way the bottom runs down like that, it's not quite really how it, how it, yeah, it's slightly different.
Hello everyone, apologies for that. I uh, just had something I had to sort out here. And it doesn't often happen, but there we go. There's occasionally. So, I am back in the room. We are off that sim because, yes, we were carving through London airspace. We're now in the cruise, 37,000 feet, uh, doing decimal 7, 8, heading out over the channel. That is all absolutely fine. Um, I will reconnect to that sim. Let me just check, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm going to reconnect once we are out of London airspace. Or we will be in big trouble. They don't. I don't think they'll allow us to just connect here. Uh, yeah, so when we get to France, we'll be absolutely fine. Um, so halfway across the channel, will be no problem at all. Steen, good to see you. Steen says, I just joined after dinner. Lighting my cigar now. I'm going to enjoy the approach. Excellent. Yes, I hope it uh, is good um, fun for you there. Uh, so, Jaco says, wonder if we'll get a cargo version of the Airbus. Yeah, I wonder. I know the 21s sometimes get converted into cargo. Uh, normal graphic settings. Uh, graphic settings here, I use high. Everything's on high. Uh, I believe, maybe even ultra, but there we go. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry uh, to, <laughs> as Seb says, yeesh, got an AFK just in time to cruise straight through London. Yeah, no, absolutely, that's no good at all. Uh, so we will rejoin once we're outside the zone. Usually that's okay as long as there's no controller there. Um, <laughs> Charlotte says, pilot is asleep post Boeing stuff. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, yeah, apologies. I posted that in, I didn't write it into the Twitch chat, I wrote it into the YouTube. That was my mistake because I can't actually chat into both uh, through my streaming software. <laughs> so uh, I just went for the first one I could get to. There we go. Um, anyway, we are looking good on Dan Air Virtual. Doesn't seem to have spotted that we're off that sim. It doesn't actually matter because it tracks us differently anyway. So that's good news. I wonder if the map works now. There we are on the map, yeah. And there's somebody else is flying Dan Air 221. Domestic flight by the looks of things. Excellent. Good. Good, good, good. Arkel says, is 321 worth it for Microsoft Flight Simulator? I didn't know anyone's making a 321. I did not know. Uh, so I can't answer that one, I'm afraid. Uh, we are now, anyway, going to set our TCAS to below. We are going to check our systems. Yes, this works properly. All of these systems pages seem to be up and running now. Quite remarkable. That's a bit low for the green. If the green was that low, I'd want the yellow to be higher. This suggests there's a lack of fluid somewhere. <laughs> no temperatures yet on the fuel. Otherwise looking good. Valves, flow. Yeah, very nice. Or fuel used. If you off. That's too warm. We will get complaints, especially if everyone's in ski gear. Put it down there, which is normal. You normally have to turn these down slightly. Doors, wheels, flight controls. Oh, fantastic. All working excellently. The chaos says the low green fluid is because of all the fluid uh, in entry is holding again. Indeed, um, but typically the yellow rises as well. Um, so you tend to see that low and that one a bit higher. That's quite an extreme low, I would I would say. It's great detail, and uh, yeah, and I wouldn't if I saw that in the real aircraft. I wouldn't be concerned as long as the gear came down uh, and it went back to normal after landing. But uh, yeah, that, that's quite quite impressively low. But still, yeah, it's a great detail and that's absolutely spot on. That's what the aircraft does. The green level does drop uh, in flight. It's, the, it's because the gear is one of the, if not the largest hydraulic system we have. So it sucks that fluid into the uh, actuators to keep the gear out. Ranbir says, I need your opinion on this. Which is better, Leap 1A or Pratt & Whitney? What are the differences? Pratt & Whitney has um, some cooling thing you have to do so for that reason alone I'm going to say uh, leap with the Pratt & Whitney you have to do um, you have to sit there and run uh, what's the name of it we have done it we've done it on the Tolis because they've modelled it some sort of cooling thing like shaft cooling or whatever it is um, I don't know why this has an engine N1 mode when it's a Neo because it is running in N1 anyway so that these buttons shouldn't even be here actually I mean I've not looked at this panel in detail <laughs> for a while but there we go it should just have engine man start but yeah somewhere around there in the Pratt Whitney you have to a whole other cooling thing it's quite fun to do but it's uh, yeah it would be a hassle when you don't want it because it's sober that's why this is the chaos <laughs> dual cooling that's it thanks chaos yeah there we go Uh, 
Ed has slam good to see you crash Ed Ed says evening all what did I miss does the fly by wire live up to expectations it is doing very well and we're doing very well as well thanks Ed thanks for joining us I hope you're having a good day Oh, there you go. So talking about freeware, 321, the LVFR 321. Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't tried it. Ty says, good afternoon. Have your eyes on any new sim gear in the future? Love your channel. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Ty. Um, yeah, I'm looking at, or I have currently sitting in a box behind me, the uh, Thrustmaster Boeing yoke. I got it on sale. Black Friday, believe it or not. So a while ago now. Uh, so I need to set that up. It's just, I don't know... It's not going really to be great for making a video, but I think it'd be good fun to have. Try out. No, sorry, it's not good for streaming. It'd be good for a video. That's my plan with it anyway. Johan says, I was flying the other day and the PTU sounded when the landing gear was lowered. Is that usual? I think it's the first time I've heard it in that snow. Goodness me. You know, it might run. It might test. Lots of things happen. The aircraft will test the brakes and everything when it lowers the gear. PTU running wouldn't surprise me um, for a moment. I haven't noticed it myself, but I wouldn't notice it on the flight deck. I mean, you wouldn't. You, uh, it doesn't run up here, or you'd see it. So I'm a little surprised, but yeah. Whether it runs a little test, I don't know. Oh, hey, says hi, Captain. What are the differences in N1 and EPR showing in the displays in both versions? There you go. That's just what we're talking about. N1 is the fan speed, so uh, N2 is the. Uh, the compressor behind the front fan and one is the fan at the front of the engine so it's spinning at 80% 80.3% of whatever 100% is rated at now remember that 100% is arbitrary it's just a setting um, so it can spin higher than that and lower than that it, it just it will correlate to an RPM but it's sitting at 80.2 right now percent so that's what that is EPR is I think it stands for engine pressure ratio uh, and that is a number that shows the pressure difference between the front and back of the airplane through some formula. So the engine will actually measure the intake pressure and the pressure at the back. That is, in theory, a more accurate representation of thrust. M1 just tells me how front the front fan is spinning, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. I assume there's some conditions where it will produce more and less thrust. For example, at high up, 82% isn't giving me the same amount of thrust or excess thrust, certainly, as it would at 5,000 feet. But uh, EPR would however EPR is a long string of numbers it's incredibly sensitive it changes all the time uh, and most pilots in EPR aircraft will ignore the EPR they put EPR up here and then they'll have N1 lower down so you actually have three round dials uh, and everyone just reads the M1 instead because it's better to read for pilots in my opinion so if there's EPR you'll still be able to see N1 put it that way and that's what these buttons are for uh, if the EPR breaks let's say a bird flies into the front sensor and you can't use uh, EPR mode anymore then you can force the engine into N1 mode uh, and then just drive the, the M1 um, I imagine the manufacturers would consider N1 slightly more basic than EPR but famously Rolls-Royce mostly use EPR Well, says, do you think this plane will end up being as detailed as Phoenix? I don't see why not eventually it might take a while but uh, yeah I mean, they've gone for different things, I suppose. I'm going to change that. I don't know if it will become as detailed as the Phoenix, but it depends what you think. For example, the Phoenix, you can't print off the weather, but then the EFB in the Phoenix is amazing and so well integrated. Uh, in the Phoenix, you can open the tray tables and put the sun blinds down. You know, it depends what you're looking for, really. I don't know whether they'll do all that um, stuff, whether they'll, they'll consider it important enough. Jay's Wecker says, you passed me, what's your speed? Yeah, we're doing all right. We're doing seven eights. And she says, I read somewhere that if the pack, if you have over 114 passengers, the pack flow is set to high, if lower than norm or low. Is that correct? Uh, wrong way around, Anthony. So I can't remember the number. The number will differ uh, between a 19, 20 and 21. So it's, it's written down. But um, no, you'll either do low flow like that or norm. So if it's, if the plane's quiet, low we've got 170 passengers today so definitely norm uh, you never set it to high they don't think high makes much difference but you can do normal low saves a couple of kilos over the flight agent ob thanks for the follow uh yeah so either low for quiet flights norm for others uh, in the 321 you'll have an econ button instead so you turn econ on when the plane's quiet 
I am indeed at 370, which probably has helped. We've got a good tailwind and we'll have a higher true airspeed up here. EPR does show in the 320 if you have the IAE engines. I'm using Fly Live Studio for the overlay. The Chaos says the hydraulic and electrical systems are arguably more in depth. Model stuff is going to be a distant thing though. There you go. So there's a lot of uh, amazing, amazing details in both of those add-ons. Um, and as ever, just all credit to Fly by Wire for giving us this. It's such a, it's such a privilege to have this available to us for free. Uh, right. We're now over France, so let's reconnect to Vatsim. As I got it working. Just checking there's no sensor running here. No, I think we're okay. Juan says, I personally don't own the Phoenix because for normal use, I think the fiber wire has more than enough features to get you from one place to another. Oh, it absolutely does. Absolutely does. No, no doubt that it has what you need to do that. JJ Smallp says, EPR gives a better indication of engine performance and thrust produced, and one just tells you the engine fan is rotating. Uh, XRAF Techie engines airframes. There you go. Thanks, JJ. There's a good point. There you go. So it tells you it's actually producing thrust, not that something's spinning. Or if you've lost some fan blades. I imagine in airliner world it matters less because if you know if you lose a fan blade or something or the engine's not producing thrust we tend to know about it but maybe it's just because we're not airline pilots tend to not understand it fully. Birdman says the Phoenix is being rewritten they've got engine out for a V2 release when there is a wet uh, is a yeah I <laughs> guess uh, okay It's been rewritten. What are they rewriting? I was involved in the um, Alpha and Beta for that. I really should. Um, I just haven't had the chance really to to provide any useful information from that since then. And also because I stream, I've been streaming the the, the release version instead of test versions. If you're descending too late, um, Jabroni, uh, you need to watch my video, When to Descend. It's on YouTube, When to Descend, and I'll talk about all of it. But essentially, three times your height in nautical miles. So 37 times three is a good point to have definitely started your descent. If you have a tailwind, you might need to add more. Uh, and if you're normal on a normal day, you'll still add about 10 miles extra to lose speed. Um, so that's typical. That's based on track miles, which is your actual routing over the ground, not just your distance directly to go, although often they're pretty similar. Nautium says, are the Neo wings really more smooth than the 321s? I've noticed they're a lot more shiny and clean, but is that accurate or texture issue? No, they're not. Yeah, there's no difference. It, it's just the texturing's different between the two models that you're using. That's all it is. This, this texture pack on the exterior of the default 320, which is what we're looking at here, is quite limited. I mean, look underneath. The Phoenix has obviously way, way, way more. It's a nice model, but yeah, it's, it's a limited in that sort of texturing. There are some differences, and modern aircraft tend to be more shiny. Some of the older Airbuses have a sort of matte effect on the metal on the top of the wings. Rambeer, good to see you. Thanks for coming along. See you next time. JJ Smallpy says, if you've lost a fan mate, the vibration will hit you now. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We are on Batsim today. Stuart says, what is the difference between fuel burn of the CO and NEO? You know, it's not as much as you'd think. It's not like 20%. I can't remember exactly what it is, and it would depend on the flight. Is it around 10%? I'm not sure. Maybe it's close to 20. It's just, it's worth it. It is noticeable. You, you know that you're, you're, you can take less fuel to the Neo and the landing fuels are lower. 10 to 15, there you go, says the chaos. Uh, 
Mike says, have you heard? Totus is adding CPDLC integration in the Airbus as an x plane. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've never managed to get CPDLC to work. Or I've never tried that hard to get my hoppy thing to work. I did try once and I got nowhere with it. Um, but yeah, that would be good. Mark says, can't wait for fly by to release their own 3D model of this plane. So a fly by wire working on a full 3D model, are they, as well? Unbelievable. Jay's Wrecker, where are you in relation to us? Go nav, rose, zoom in. Can't see anyone now. We're doing all right. Amazing. Oh, there we go. After the 380. Okay. Does that mean 380 is, is getting closer? Exciting stuff. Uh, if, if the 380 launches with this many things working, then, you know, and pretty much everything that works in this aircraft was done by uh, was done by fly by wire themselves so if they can get the A380 to launch with systems pages uh, instrumentation working and then we've also got sort of the, the failures to some extent you know normal law and so on if this stuff works it'd be amazing Hayden J Robbins thank you so much for your £3.20 super chat uh, Hayden says great to see another 320 sim pilot stream more heli soon now helis yes um, I have not yet practiced helis because I spent the, the last few days um, when I could I got this sim back up and running but I do have a little a little plan for some heli flying that I'm hoping I can get sorted if I can just learn how to fly the uh, a nice helicopter probably the default jet ranger seems pretty good no can I is that okay but I need to get the trim assigned and so on which means another control profile but anyway yes that is something that's on the cards. If I can get it working and get what I want, the scenery I wanted to do, then hopefully we could have a go at that. That could be good fun. Be a bit of a group flight, I'm thinking. But thank you so much, Hayden. Thanks for supporting the channel, as always. And thank you for the very kind super chat. I really appreciate it. Oh dear, Jay's Wreck is getting <laughs> bombarded by other pilots. Um, Bo, I am using the... Uh, I'm using the experimental version of the fly-by-wire. Matamot says, I'm recently flying the A321X with Neofly and I get often penalties for going more than 250 knots below flight of 100. How does the A320 Neo perform in real life? Is he making sure that it's not going faster than 250 knots? Or is it like the speed rule around that flight level not that important as long as you are around 250? Certainly it's not that important. No one, I've never been called up about it. Uh, if you go through 100 at 300 knots, you know, uh, but then slow down shortly after it's unlikely an air traffic controller is going to get too upset depending where you are in the world um, the regulations are different you know if the rules are 250 then you should be 250 but you know winds happens uh, if you're doing sort of 270 then it's unlikely a traffic will even notice uh, but if you maintain that all the way down to sort of 5,000 feet or something above the ground then they will notice and, and slow you down probably some countries in Europe don't even have it as a rule uh, it's it's not always the case um, in terms of aircraft design and so on, there's nothing about it. There's no physical reason you have to do 250 knots. And if we want to go faster, we will often ask air traffic control, can we maintain high speed below 100? The reason we'll do that is if we think we are high and we have too much energy, by flying faster with idle thrust, we get more drag out of the airplane or more drag on the airplane, and then we can get more height off. However, that's a risky strategy when it comes to, not risky, but it's a strategy you have to watch carefully when it comes to terrain beneath you, other airplanes, weather, you can't fly, you don't want to fly through thunderstorms, well not thunderstorms, but you don't want to even fly through thick clouds, or bumpy clouds I should say, uh, at a higher speed, you want to be a bit slower at the wing uh, turbulent speed. So, lots to consider, but ultimately no, going slightly over 250 knots for a thousand feet or something below 100 isn't going to make a big deal. Um, as says, which is better in your opinion, fittings or fly-by-wire? 
it, it's not remember the phoenix has things like final app uh r and par capable uh it's got loads of these systems already built in along with the failures and so on so if that's what you want that's great um but the fly by wire has has so many great little details as well i don't want to say one is better or not than the other one costs money one is free one's a neo one's a co and i know these things don't sound like a lot but you know we make a big deal out of uh, these small changes you know everyone wants phoenix to release the ie version you know that's just an engine change <laughs> um so it's, it's just whether it's entirely up to you whether you think it'd be value for you or not i like both i fly both quite happily i i'm i'm regretful that i had not flown the a32nx for as long as it's been that's what i will say i should have flown it uh, more recently here we go we're going from the sort of scattered clouds to the overcast excellent one can print the eight is very important says skeptic yeah exactly that is very good feature as the chaos says they're different aircraft yeah especially neo and co Yes, as the air says, you can use SimBridge to print this stuff on a real printer as well. <laughs> yeah, there's some great fun of details. And Phoenix have done some great details as well, you know. It's, it's great to see what different developers uh, uh, come up with when, you come, when it comes to these sorts of things. The way of solving these problems, how the EFB should look. You know, they're totally different and yet um, they're quite... It's quite enjoyable to see the different ways of solving the same problems as it were even in a tiny little community that is airliner flights in flying you know <laughs> I feel like landing the fly by wire is smoother than the Phoenix. What do you think? I haven't landed this one in a while and my Phoenix isn't working, so I'm not going to say. Phoenix has gone through different phases on landing. We had some. I think it launched with quite a nice landing, the Phoenix, and then there was a change which didn't go so well, and then it had to be sort of uh, modified again. And I think it got to quite a good place. But I haven't landed the uh, fly by wire for a while. MSHR says, can we talk about sunglasses rules for pilots to follow? Yes, the rule is uh, they have to be aviators. That's the only sunglasses. No, there's no rules uh, to sunglasses. They can't be polarized, though, because it can interfere with screens and windscreens. Now, who goes around and checks and enforces that law? I don't know. I don't know. But there is a risk of polarized sunglasses. So I don't use polarized sunglasses as a result, even though polarized would be great because it would cut out the glare of the clouds, you see. But the problem is there's filters on these screens and windows that could cause problems. V1 says, V1, sorry, the chaos says, V1 compared the autoline capabilities and the fly by wire did manage to track the centerline better. There you go. So, land mode works, auto land works in the fly by wire, but final app doesn't. So. Bravo says, I've flown fly by wire through to NX since launch. It's my main aircraft. It's amazing. For it. it is indeed amazing. Richard says, have you ever done the landing at uh, airport in Madeira? Is it as hard as I said? It's, yeah. It's, it's just amazing. Madeira is amazing. But I still think the circle onto one end is fine and exciting. But if you approach, the, maybe we should do it on a stream one day. We should go to the other end because you have to sort of point at the wall. It's something else and you're sort of drifting towards it. Um, but yeah, I've been to Madeira. It's quite something. J 
Jeff says, hello, Three Twenty Pilot. Love your content. Because of you, I've decided to take the plunge and purchase a computer to play flight sim. Love the channel and how you teach love from Italy. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. Really very kind. Enjoy your simming. And it's a good time to buy a computer now, at least. So hopefully things go pretty smoothly there. Uh, it was a nightmare um, a couple of years ago. When I started this channel, it was right during the pandemic, you just couldn't get parts. I got lucky to build my computer when I managed. Okay. We need to start thinking about descending and getting into uh, Grenoble. So let's go back to our charts. We need to learn these icons better, that one. For example, the second says, you don't want to use polarized sunglasses. Trust me, you'd quickly get annoyed by darker screens. The change in brightness and everything. Yeah, there you go. No. Uh, that's what I was, that was my understanding. So pin charts. Can I clear edits? Bin, bin, bin. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. So now let's get. Our Grenoble charts. Airport chart. Grenoble's quite a small airport. Just opens in the winter for the ski season. Oh, there it is. So we'll land, vacates, terminal, tiny terminal. Just in case there's a controller, I'll have the parking stands ready. Star, we are expecting the Roa 3 Alpha. So we'll pin that. Uh, I believe that's for all runways. Yes, it is. So we're coming in from Roan. Is it Roan? Yep, Roan. Down we go to Arbon, and then we either fly the beautiful um, Arnav onto. Sorry, no, it's Arnavon two seven. What are the approaches available? Arnavon zero nine on the Arnavon two seven. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's the Arnav. So let's just check what the weather's doing. One zero two four. Oh, there's a little later. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That's better. Uh, so three four zero at six. Can we refresh that? Does it refresh automatically? In fact, what am I doing? What am I doing? We should be printing it out anyway. Bravo says thank you for your streams. Three journey sim pilot. They're very much appreciated. I've learned so much from you. You're very welcome, Bravo six three two. Thank you for saying so. Let's just grab a weather. Meter. Yep. We don't actually need the Magister one. And let's just grab an ATIS. But I don't think there's any ATIS available there. Nope. It yeah, refreshes massively. Thanks, Chaos. Thank you for your work on this. It's just incredible. This is really yeah, amazing. And you know, the, I know we've been involved in the development cycle, but to see it get so many updates so continuously, remarkable. Oh, click the button. No need for the IKO. Ah. Ah, from to alternate. Yeah, there we go. That's my bad. So that's even easier. Here's our meters. Print. There you go. There's our top of descent arrow. Remember I said about 120 miles from the airfield. 170 minus 50 would be 120 miles. There you go. It agrees with us. With a light sort of crosswinds. They did put in a calculator in here. I don't use it because. But if you are unsure, you can get your ground speed. See, the problem is, is your ground speed is going to change the whole way. But anyway, ground speed, current altitude, 37,000 feet, target altitude, whatever the elevation is. Probably a bit higher than that. At three degrees, slightly descent, 116 miles. There you go. But we do have a landing calculator. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, 
I just need to choose the runway. Anyway, let's well let's get our weather printed and then we can decide which runway we want to land on. So yeah, three two zero at six, ten Ks or more, one degree, so it's cold, QNH one zero two four. So that with that wind you can do whatever you want. It is slightly in favour, slightly in favour of a, an RNAV onto two seven. So what do we want to do? Do we want to do the RNAV? Indeed, Tom Varro to send out if you're in the experimental version. Would we like to do the RNAV or the ILS? I don't know why I'm asking that. I know the answer to that. So here we go. That's just Arben. YouTube is complaining. Hopefully this signal's okay. Jay's is doing RNAV, RNAV, more educated. Okay, so we'll have to do the RNAV, but it'll be the LNAV only. So, let's see if that chart's any good to us. By WS. That's the one. Good. Let's load it in. So arrival. R F two seven. Row three alpha. Arben. So there's also gomets and another point. Um, we're going to use Arben. And head around that way. And there's our bit. And so let's check that's worked. So we go plan constraint. Zoom in. And there we go. So oh, we need to insert it. Let's insert that. Or did I miss the transition? I might miss the transition actually. Does it need a transition? We should see. So scrolling along. So it goes by dope him and then in from the south. Dope him and then in LS400. And that's all fine. And then there's a waypoint called RS27, totally confusing for the RNF because it is only an RNF. Um, it does LNAV, not VDEV. Yes, quite. So this is only going to work laterally. So we're going to do the LNAV only minima. Uh, LNAV over here, CDFA. Uh, good. So that's. Yeah, that's coded correctly. That's the plan. In we come. 200 knots, 4,500 feet of dope him. I want to be about 7,000 feet as a maximum. Uh, airfield elevation is. Where do they write it on these charts? A lot of information on this chart. I think they write it up here, don't they? It's 1,300 feet. Yeah, pretty high up. Pretty high up. Uh, so I want to be 7,000 feet above the ground of beam. So that's actually going to be. We can be 8,500 feet as we pass a beam at Dopin so way above that but we want the speed right back because this is I remember this before when we did it last year and he gets rushed in here um, because the final approach is not so long oh. so we're going to get flap 2 out and then we're going to come around the corner at 4,200 feet 4,200 feet then we descend down to 3,700 feet which is mandatory before FLS 27 which is there at 3,700 feet which is platform and then we're going to configure ourselves because there's no final lap mode. So to do that, I am going to uh, configure the aircraft five miles before 
this is a 3.5 mile leg so actually we need to get around the corner flat to 160 then we're going to manage the speed three miles to go gear down two miles to go flap three one mile to go i'm going to wind i'm going to have it in track fpa and wind in the next uh, fpa half mile to go flat full and then at point three i'm going to pull the fpa that's the plan then we're going to descend down flight path angle is 3.3 degrees hence we need to do that in advance so let me just make a note of that 3.3 degrees so that's why i want to be flat full um, and we're going to pull that half uh, 0.3 miles go to 3.3 and down we go then we're going to monitor it at each mile so six miles three four forty five miles thirty ninety four miles twenty seven fifty and so on down to the runway uh, we need to be visual by 1740 feet which is only 438 feet above the runway there we go and h1302 i hope you're doing very well great to see you here we are about to take on the arnav again <laughs> With tradition, ski tradition. Um, yeah, so this is LNAV only minima, so this is totally fine because fine lap doesn't work for us. Now you could fly an Airbus where fine lap doesn't work, so this is what that's used for. Now MSAs are high, we've got 5,000 and 7,800 in this sector off to the east, so if we get lost, we need to climb to 8,000 feet as a minimum. Let's load in some of that weather because we are missing our top of descent right now. Perf. So Q&H of 1024, temperature 1, wind 3206, and minima 1740, MDA or Barrow. Landing config full, the app of 130, if we go around, LS410 left turn at 220 knots to Arban 5000 feet to hold, so 5000 feet. So straight up to 5,000 feet if we go around. Clean speed of 234, so we'll actually have to leave flat one out when we do that. So we've passed our top of descent. The little dots down there are way low, so let's start down. Top of descent reach. So uh, let's put in, what's our Arban point? Arban, max 5,000 feet. Uh, I reckon we can be comfortably 10,000 feet there. So... So I started open descent, out blue, flight of 100. Sorry about that. Now we'll be a good Top of descent to playing. Let me just the get the internet working again. Okay, hopefully that works for you. Um, I had a bit of an issue there with the internet. Let's see if that helps. YouTube is still complaining. Greetings, Fly Greenland. How's Twitch doing? which looks like it may have recovered. Hmm. Bit concerning. Oh no, YouTube's back, YouTube's back. So hopefully that recovers, sorry about that. Had to do a bit of an off and on on the internet here or a part of the internet here. Uh, good, so we're now, yeah, 6,500 feet high. We're way high, so let's just wind the speed up. I'm not going to do it in manage mode because we're too high, and it's going to just overspeed if we do that. Um, I 
Yeah, that message said we've gone offline. Now that's not good. I wanted the scenery available. Can I fix that? On. Bing data. On. Yeah, I agree. I'd rather they just sort of put a little note on the screen. It doesn't need to pause to tell us being data has been removed. Maybe they're just worried you'll think the simulator's not as good as it is. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's on. Good stuff. Yeah, we definitely want the scenery. Uh, so yeah, I missed the ones PA there. <laughs> Bit of a shame. <laughs> uh, good. So yeah, we're going to come in Arban and head out downwind. MSA of 7.8. Climbing to 5,000 in the event of go around, leaving flat one out. Big threat is terrain all around. So 8,000 feet of beam in the airfield is an absolute maximum. Uh, and I want to be, I'm going to say I want to be back below 220 at that point. But actually, uh, it says 200. There we go. So I think if we're 200, 8,000, and we get flat two out, then we'll have no trouble completing the rest of it. And that is a maximum. Um, I don't want to be pushing on that at all. Let's keep winding that speed up. Let's let the airplane regain the profile. Yes, Microsoft had some trouble today, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, it says, I'd, I'd want you for the PA instead. I don't fly in the US. There you go. <laughs> this is a very American flight. We've been sent over to run this charter. Yeah, I know actually talking is at this airport. Indeed, Dougal. Yeah, well remembers. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, right, landing distance. Let's go to calculators. So that's all loaded in. Runway heading. We're landing on uh, two seven. Right. So reverse us no. Auto land no. Overweight no. Config full. Weight 66, 170. Well, it'll be about 65, 8, 7. Nope. Oh. Approach speeds. Uh, 135. Thanks for the follow. And uh, Runway LDA. Back to our charts. And we go to taxi, airport. We are landing on runway 27. Landing beyond. That's weird. Why doesn't it have the idea available there? Well, it's 30.50, and I don't think there's any inset threshold, so I'm going to just say it's 30.50. I don't think there's any insets. Yeah, 30.50 if you do from the runway head. Okay, 30.50 it is. Runway slope. That's just been zero. Right, what else does it need? It's not happy. Wind, temperature, Q and H. Elevation we said at about 1300 feet. Calculates. So medium, 1646, low, 23. I think we'll go low. Low, auto brake, brake low arms up there, there we go. Go down then to 100, 2700 feet high. So yeah, this VDEV profile is looking pretty good to me. 70 miles to go, 20,000 feet. In fact, I think we're probably 
Probably getting a bit low, actually. Cinema wants us down there. It could be trying to make some of these restrictions. Arbon, it's got Arbon at 7.7. Well, that's reasonable. That's about what we said. I said about 100. I was going to be a little bit higher there. I think we could be down at... Uh, I suppose Arbon's a bit closer than 60 miles. Uh, we'll see. Let's see. Let's put it into managed speed and managed descent then. Let's try it out. Trust little Des. Look at this. Matthew Presley, good to see you. Matthew says, just give the obnoxiously loud 5 MPA after a red eye to wake everyone up. Had to do that going into uh, Redacted Italian City. I'm sure they all left it. There you go. <laughs> Bet they did. If, uh, uh, I don't have subscriptions enabled on Twitch, uh, but you can subscribe to my YouTube if you like. A follow on Twitch and a like on YouTube are greatly appreciated as well. Checkpoint, good to see you. Checkpoint's back in time. Excellent. When are you going to get affiliate here on Twitch, says Ask Google. So if I want to do that, I have to give up on the YouTube live streaming. Or not give up, but I have to. they have to be separate. I can't stream simultaneously on both and be an affiliate on Twitch. So I don't know how I can do that. Because I know... Let's have a look. What are the numbers like? There is um, a 237 of you watching along on YouTube. So thank you all for joining. Do please hit the like button uh, if you are enjoying on uh, YouTube and on Twitch there are 107 of you so our Twitch following is growing and it's, it's now about a third of our viewers per stream um, so the Twitch thing is getting more regular however we're still largely followed by YouTube so it's a bit of an awkward spot for me to work out which way I want to do that um, but it's very kind I really really flattered and appreciate people trying to subscribe on Twitch it's, it's, it's really appreciated um, and hopefully we'll get something sorted out uh, the chaos says I also thought they changed some rules ah can you I have to look at that. Shwaran says I get better quality on the Twitch stream, which is very nice for sim streams. There you go. I can believe it. Um, Leanne says, I, for me, I have YouTube Premium. Saves me on getting Twitch subs. There you go. Thank you very much, Leanne. Yeah, so if you're YouTube Premium, I get a, a little bit of... Um, they give you a small uh, sort of tip for that when Premium members watch your videos. Uh, I'm indeed using Experimental Version, Ninja Plays. Uh, and Checkpoint says, I only watch Twitch because it recovers better than YouTube when there's a hiccup and it has lower latency before. There you go. Uh, the, uh, the Black Sheep says, yes, Twitch is better streaming, I found, bandwidth and quality. The Chaos says, the only reason I'm here is because the dual stream solutions for each and any users make YouTube stream have super high latency. No, I've always had high latency on YouTube, the Chaos. Well, we did lower it, but it caused more problems. So we went back to the, sort of the medium latency. That's what's happened there. Um, it didn't get worse after doing dual streaming, as far as I'm aware. Um, but you might, I suppose, it, you guys would know. <laughs> so, um, I have the Twitch because I wanted the Twitch to be able to use... We are indeed in live weather, Lucas, tonight. Uh, I wanted the Twitch so I could use... Uh, I wanted to be able to do different things, more casual things. Um, but the main thing was just to try something different and what i found with twitch is it does have some big perks especially when things go wrong because it's just one thing it's not the video the downsides for me as far as i can tell are a lot of our viewers are obviously on youtube and maybe not familiar or don't use twitch and secondly people on youtube like seeing the videos later now the solution is quite easy which is i can stream on twitch and then upload the video to youtube later but i don't want to uh walk away from streaming on YouTube live if people that's where people want to see it there you go Andy says I can't watch Twitch on my TV so for me it's no bueno YouTube all the way there you go 
didn't even think of that one and that makes a lot of sense yeah you'd have to watch it on your phone really wouldn't you uh, not not as good as being able to watch it I know quite a few people watch it on their TVs Martin thanks Martin Hawkins for checking Martin says okay I just checked you still can't simultaneously stream to YouTube and Twitch as a Twitch affiliate or partner there you go that's the one Pierce good to see you Pierce says hi Cap I was in the cockpit on a Bira 320 flight recently after top uh, and they retracted landing lights shortly after takeoff is this common or is it usually 10,000 feet it's becoming more common now Pierce that's very common these days to retract the landing lights earlier right let's go down to Arbon it says above 7-0 uh, done our performance back to our charts where's my pins charts there we go So here we have Arbon, 5,000. We'll just put 7-0 in. That's 10,000 feet. We're leaving the LS buttons off because we're doing a non-precision. We're going to check that the accuracy is high. GPS is primary, although we're not going to do a final lap anyway. We're going to put the seatbelt signs on. Might need the engine anti-ice soon. And let's run a checklist. Oh, we should have done some more of these. Done, done, done. Approach. We're not on barrel ref yet, so we can't quite do that. Althor has Twitch on the TV. Very good. Didn't think you do that. Four prawns. Four prawns, thank you for your contribution to the channel um, during our, our uh, time not streaming over the last week. But thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Four prawns says, and I have to watch both so that I can see all the chat. There you go. <laughs> well, what we did for a while was we had... Um, we, I did put the chat on screen, but that was uh, uh, very much disliked, <laughs> and I can understand why. Spy says, landing lights cause a bit of drag, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. Now, I don't think it causes much drag in this context, so I'm going to turn them on. But in theory, they do, because, of course, they stick out in the airflow. But the point is, we're at idle now anyway, so and as your speed is slower, the amount of drag they cause is less. Now, they probably make quite a big difference at high speed, at high Mach numbers and so on, but idle, 250 knots and below, really. Okay, so you can also hear them in the fly-by-wire. Oh, very good. Let's have a listen. I'll retract them again. Because you can tell when you're a passenger, you can hear them. They rumble, especially at higher speeds. might be sitting a bit too far back here now Matthew Presley has something that I'm not going to say I agree or disagree with but Matthew Presley says sounds like pencil pushers got a hold of the landing light replacement bill <laughs> Now, I've been told, like, landing lights are not a requirement to be on below 10,000 feet. It's, it, it was customer practice, and now it's changed. And uh, legally, you'll have people say things like, well, it doesn't matter, visibility's done through other things, blah, blah, blah. But I agree with Matthew that the first way to spot an aircraft is the landing lights. <laughs> it's a huge difference. Now, how often we rely on visually maneuvering away from another aircraft, it's never, isn't it? That's the reality. So is it worth living in the past when we would have had to, uh, when nowadays it's TCAS and radar control and so on? You know, that's, that's the point. And I, I understand that. But yes, I still maintain that they are incredibly good at making your aircraft visible. So if you think there could be general aviation around, maybe there's paragliders or parachute dropping and so on going on near a ski destination like this in winter. So this would be a time to consider having them out. Richard Dusley has a Raspberry Pi plugged into the TV. Let's me use Twitch and YouTube and other streaming services and avoid TV profiling. There you go. The Black Sheep says, I've been in the Phoenix a lot lately. Think I'll fly the fly by wire. Yeah, why not? Give it a go. 
Ah, so Leanne says, I asked the pilots in the fly-by-wire Discord about landing lights, and yeah, it doesn't make a practical difference to being visible unless in terrible weather. Yeah, I think I think you'll only see an aircraft with the landing lights on, um, but the question is whether that matters or not, <laughs> I suppose. Aaron is watching by YouTube on TV. Love the videos. Thank you. You're very welcome, Aaron. Thanks for watching. Chris as well, live casting. So there you go. A lot of people put it on the TV. That's really good to know. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. You know, it's doing a great job here. It wanted 7,000 at Arbonne. It's going to do it. Yeah. Agreed. Matthew says, we turn ours on and off at 18,000. There you go, the transition in America. Yeah. <laughs> but think of the fuel, Matthew. Think of the fuel you're burning with those landing lights. Must be made of money, your airline. <laughs> Thing is, it is... I, we, we joke around, but I, it obviously is incremental gains. Everything is when it comes to fuel burn and carbon emissions and so on. Uh, if you do lots and lots of flights in a day, one of these Airbuses can easily do eight flights in a day. So, you know... If you're saving anything per flight you can times it by eight times that by 365 and so on and it adds up to a big number no surprise but i would i would suggest caution about disregarding landing lights i would i would definitely have them on if i think there's likely to be general aviation traffic around or anything like that the irony is on the airbus of course that when you descend through 10,000 feet under high speed what was quite common is to not extend the landing lights anyway because at that speed the rumble and drag is noticeable even though there's no speed limit on the lights so so that is a bit ironic when you come plowing in really fast they'll uh, people might be less inclined to put the lights out <laughs> when arguably they could be more useful right let's go down to our next platform of i think i pref still prefer using the separate charts app because there's just too many things at once here uh, anyway and that's not that's not fly by wire fault they've done an amazing job but uh, yeah uh, next one is 4500 at Dopin thanks for the follows and subscriptions there and thank you for those additional likes really really appreciate it and thank you for all the likes that were already there 4500 into DES we're in managed speed set Q&H 1025 so there we go, 4,500, it reckons just before Dopin. Perfect. And it should, let's see if it brings the speed back to 200 and then we can put the flaps out. I'd be really impressed if this is working. This is proper VNAV we're using here. This isn't, I remember when it first came out and it was in its early days, but this is getting very good. Matthew says you can easily see an aircraft at 20 miles ahead with the landing lights on during the day. You'd have to be a fighter pilot to see it. This is that. Exactly, yeah, agreed, agreed. The answer is, on airline scales, the cost of landing light drag would matter. Yes. However, I still question how much it actually saves. Look at that. We're at idle thrust here. Uh, you know, from 10,000 feet onwards, you don't tend to be flying at high speeds. Maybe in the climb out, 250 knots from sort of 3,000 feet to 10,000 feet, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, dear. Apparently, the Navigraph charts update is a bit too much. Had to relearn everything. Okay. I haven't tried it yet. That sounds... <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Temperature plus 7. Engine antenna is coming on as we enter the clouds. Well, I was so excited to have the view, but we're not going to get much of it. We should probably check that the minima is going to work for us today. <laughs> Overcast 2.3. Oof. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Do good agrees with that. Okay. Interesting. I have not tried FS Realistic, Sammy. No. Screen shake on touchdown, turbulence FX, immersive SFX. Yeah, I I don't tend to like things that move the camera. That's the only thing. I struggle with those. Personally. The VFR update is made. Yes, sir. is that the VFR update for the Navigraph charts? That is... That does sound good. Let me get the light recorder uh, why is Windows search effectively completely useless it just searches the internet it doesn't actually 
I'm sure I've got it set wrong. It never searches my own apps or shortcuts, it seems. It would just offer me endless suggestions from the web. Oh, there we go. We are visible with the terrain. Okay, recording the approach now. Right, 4,800 feet. It should slow down to 200 shortly and we'll start getting the flaps out. Just dim that screen a bit. It's a bit gloomy here. Position check of the radio altimeter makes sense that we are getting it on this ridge here, hence the 4,500 foot level off. It's quite an alarming view, isn't it, with the Merc out there? So, 4,5, we know the airfield elevation is at 1,300, so 2,5 plus 13 would be 3,5, 3,8. And then there's a 700 foot hill here. Does that make sense? Does that tie in? We're actually going to turn in that valley in front of us. If we zoom in here, we can see that a bit more clearly. So we're going to turn before that high terrain we can see up here. This is why I probably wouldn't... I wanted to be a bit higher here than the... I'm letting the um, fly by wire do its thing. And there's nothing wrong with this. It's very good. But uh, yeah, I, I wanted to be a little bit higher here. There's our calling in front. Let's just make an announcement or a radio call. Grenoble traffic... Jet set 2646, downwind for the Arnav runway 27, a beam the airfield. We're just ahead of you, downwind uh, C4 and I. Great, thank you. Uh, what do you think about fly-by-wire versus Phoenix for performance? I'm still at 12 FPS with Phoenix at big airports, 44 with the PMG. Well, the PMG is remarkable. The performance of the PMG is excellent. There we go. Now it's uh, slowing down, so let's go to flap one. Next altitude limit, to, uh, still 4,500. So this leg, we're just going to fly level and decelerate. So yeah, I'm not sure why I wanted to be 4, 5 exactly, but maybe it saw that as a restriction. I don't know. GoFog has a 12,000 below constraint, says Blueberry King. That's why the whole approach is so shallow. There you go. Yeah, I missed that one. Excellent. Thank you. And this is, like I say, this is not uncommon for the, uh, the rear aircraft to do something like this. Hence, keeping an eye on your own descent where you want to be. Because sometimes those below restrictions you can ignore. I say ignore, you can ask a traffic and they won't make you do it. So that has activated the approach phase already then. It's done its decel points. Ninja says it's set up right but it just sucks. There you go. I feel like if I type in the name of a program I use regularly, it should be able to just sort of figure it out. But there we go. Getting towards the snow. Not been so much snow here. We're a bit early. Our skiers might be a little bit disappointed, although if they're going to the do Alps, they'll be alright. Because it's high enough over in those hills over there. Good, good, good stuff. If you are on YouTube uh, and you're enjoying, do please leave a like. It makes a big, big difference to the channel. Really appreciate it, thank you. Stunning approach with or without snow. Indeed, indeed. It's quite cool that we're getting this. So there's the hill. This is what we don't want to fly too fast at, hence the speed's nice back nice and slow. Our colleague's not too far in front. I'm actually gonna go flap two now. Speed is good. Flap two. Just get the energy out of the aeroplane. It gives us more options in a moment, which is when we're gonna need it. And he says, don't forget, flaps have to be up and engines off to file through Pegasus and must be done before replays. Will do, Andy. Let's see what we can make work for that. James P. flew from Grenoble to Luton on Christmas Eve. It was crazy busy. Yeah, a lot of people on Christmas Eve is a very busy time to be flying around. Let's zoom in again. So we're going to stay at 4.5, then we're going to drop to 4.2 and then 3.7. And that's the bit where we need the energy out of the airplane. Hence, I'm going so slowly now. Because otherwise, this could be uh, you're trying to lose height and speed at the same time. But now we're well under control for that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful! Just as you get where the snow's fallen, amazing. Only two security lanes for hundreds of skiers. Classic, <laughs> yeah, classic. Igloo says creating a video filter profile for Microsoft Flight Simulator improves so much. Very good. terrain quite something 
So we are now on this leg. Mandatory 4-5, max 200. That's what we're doing. And, and then 4-2. No problem. So let's put 4-2 in the window. Do 400 feet per minute vertical speed. Speed is already way back. Now we should get a little blue arrow. There we do, a little blue arrow. And then immediately we'll leave 4-2. 185 knots now. We're below 185 knots. That's fine. Yeah, this is great scenery, Spigen. Agreed. But you can see where the snow sort of half fallen, half melted. How have they done this so well? Look at that. You've got snow, and then you've got the transition. It's not just like a, a line. It sort of fades. Some of the fields have faded. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, I'm pushing the limits of my computer here. There's 4-2. out look at the dot working with us the arrows working remarkable stuff round the turn down to three seven and if we put in the right vertical speed oh, 500 minus 500 out blue three seven and it shows us the level of arrow i'm actually going to get down a little bit quicker to give ourselves a better chance. So our top of descent point is FLS 27. That's three miles away, so let's go gear down. Arm the ground spoilers. Get the nose lights on. Let's take off now. 2,500. American Airlines make a lot of PAs, don't they? <laughs> that's star. Right, two miles to go. Let's go to flight three. Let's put it into track FPA and let's arm. We said 3.3 .3 degrees. Out. Yeah, that's fine. So I've got 3.3 .3 in the window. So that's ready to go. At one mile, so 3.3. .3. At half a mile, I'm using this little counter here. We'll go flat full. Flat full. Now it balloons slightly, and then at point 0.3, we pull. FPA 3.3, .3, put the going out here now 5,000 feet. Nine, the roll out, uh, two, That's easy in front, excellent. Now it's taking its time to start down, so I reckon we're going to be a little bit high now. And then we can follow the profile. So, distance to the runway, 6 miles, 34.40. So it's 6 miles, we want to be 34.40. Six miles, 35.40. So we actually need to do a whole degree over one mile. So that's going to be 4.3. That's quite a lot. We'll see what sort of vertical speed that does. Let's give the cabin a check. Next check is five miles, 30.90. Five miles, 30.90. Jet set, 2646. Grenoble traffic landing runway 27. Five miles, we're at 30.80. Should have been 30.90, so now we are back on profile. So that worked. It's a bit slow to respond, so I'm going to do 3.1. Actually, I'm going to do 3 for this one, and then we should be in the right place. Next check is 4 miles, 27.50. Yeah, we got a little bit low here. 27.50 there at 4.2. Just see where we get to. Yeah, it's overdone it. Let's put it to 2.5. Let's give the cabin the ding. We are stable and we're visual. Three reds, but we are correcting that. Next check, three miles, 2400. That's 2400 at 3.2. Yeah, still sitting a little bit low. But we're visual now. We've got autopilot off, flight directors off. We've got the bird, put the runway track in. And we're gonna go and land. So the rear Airbus balloons when you put flap it uh, quicker, but the reason we start we pull the FPA slightly early, we put it at um, we pull the FPA at 0.3 miles to go in order to counteract the balloon of putting out flap four. That's why we do it. So yeah, it's, it's a real behaviour. There we go. Can't remember what livery I did this in for the video, and we flew her on stream. 
Yeah, it's a better picture. Hundred above. Four hundred. Luckily, the weather's lovely. Oh yeah, of course it's not close because it's we're five hundred feet. Only five hundred feet minimum. So yeah. Minimum. Three hundred. So let's see how the landing is. We'll just use idle reverse, the water break. Two hundred. It looks shallow to me out the window, considering we're supposed to do a three point three degree approach. One hundred. Hundred, yeah. Cool that this is pretty much three degrees. Fifty. Maybe a little bit shallower. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Idle. Retard. Oh ten. Bit of an overflare. There we go, holding it there, holding it there. Let's touch down. Idle reverse. So we've got reverse green, decel. And the ground spoilers. Excellent. So, yeah, that was quite a sensitive initial flare. We just disengage the auto brakes. But otherwise, lovely. Handled, uh, handled nicely. Just that first pair, yeah, quite quite responsive, but not unreasonable. And we've got the replay, so we can go and check that out. We could even do a backtrack. I oh, know we'll just vacate up here. So, welcome to Grenoble. That was a, a really enjoyable flight. Thank you all for coming along. I, I've uh, yeah had a lot of fun there. What we'll do is we're just going to park up. I'm doing this with Dan Air Virtual. So if you'd like to join a virtual airline, they're really good fun. They fly a lot of um, what happened there. UK charter airlines uh, retro ones um, but we're going to have to go and park up to make sure that this gets filed properly so we will do the proper after landing flow and then we'll get a replay in after that if I can make it all work so let's clear ourselves off the runway yeah you see 15 knots feels a lot slower when you've been rolling out to 100 and whatever <laughs> where is it going there we go over the line, get around the corner. Grenoble traffic, jet set, 2646, runway vacated. There we go. Thanks to Chaos, glad you enjoyed it. And thanks for all your work on this amazing, amazing add-on. I mean, what a treat. So yeah, final app was the only thing that didn't work there, but that VNAV for that approach, super. So just on the ground spoilers, flaps to zero. Get the APU up and running. Engine anti ice off. It's nice and clear down here. Um, oh, yeah, we didn't bother with their <laughs> approach checklist or the landing checklist in the end. Eco memo where we did that. After landing, just radar printed windshield is all it wants. There we go. Uh, so we'll turn those off. Go and pack up at the main terminal. All our lucky skiers can hopefully get a glimpse of the snow there, so they'll be all excited to get in for the. Uh, get their first run on the slopes in. Delta Tango says, it looked shallow to me as well doing this same practice run just yesterday. There you go. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Hans says, thanks again, Tim Pilot. Really entertaining educational. You're welcome, Hans. Thanks for coming along. Glad you thought so. Yeah, brilliant stuff. So glad we got back in the A32 and X. Far too long between flights in it. Um, and also really glad, happy we got the overlay and vaccine working for us today. Even if I had to leave at exactly a critical vaccine moment. <laughs> there we go. Like she says, do you use anti ice when temp is minus 40 and below a cruise on a clear day? Uh, no, below minus 40 in climb or cruise, you don't need to use anti ice. Delta Tango says, you have great instructional videos. Thank you for taking the time to produce them. Great to hear from Natural 320 Pilot. You're welcome, Delta Tango. Thanks for coming along. Landing lights to Stephen Whitaker. Well spotted. Yes, strobes to auto. Landing lights off. Turn off and I can go to taxi. There we go. The lighting, by the way, on the, this is still great. Look at that. I forgot how good it was, actually. Ooh, ooh, ooh. nothing to see there nothing to see there <laughs> yeah the chaos indeed we have 380s everywhere I'm looking forward to just lights traffic 
So we'll take this stance. Let's do our colleague. APU is available. Nose lights off. Accumulator has pressure. Uh, I normally use FSLTL, but I, I've, I'm going to turn it off and try out uh, just lights traffic when that comes around. Oh. One thing I haven't got working with the flyby at the moment is the Thrustmaster TCA master switches. I reckon a bit further, a bit further, there. How do we do? Ah, oh, not even close. <laughs> uh, break is set. APU is available. Yeah, my master switches don't work. So goodbye, engines. Oh. No, 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 don't do this. Continue. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Eboss says, nice landing after ski. Here I come. Cheers, Captain. You're welcome, Eboss. Thanks for coming along. Matthew says, totally never taxied in with the landing lights and strobes on before. Nope, not me. <laughs> Quite. Or with the speed brakes still up. That's the other classic. That's when you know someone's had a, a, a stressful approach. One thoughts with the generics, says Richard. I use FSTL and AIG models, only see generics for a few players. Yeah, no, I don't know what's going on. My FSTL obviously isn't working. Or maybe I didn't start up the app correctly. Maybe I should have done. But there we go. Um, so I will stop the replay. Let me just stop the flight. It may now be ended. So I'm going to file the pilot report. Yep. Yeah. For my boss, Andy, to approve. Or not. <laughs> Um, and that is all good. So, in terms of doing a replay, what's best? I'm assuming people would like a replay. Yeah, I'm going to start the engines for the replay. I think that's the best idea here. I don't think there's a quick way to do that. So we'll just start this up. John Wallace, thank you so much for your £5 super chat. I really appreciate it. John says, thank you. Very educational and enjoying to watch. You're very, very welcome. Thank you, John. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for that uh, super chat. Very kind. Uh, and of course, thank you to our colleague for flying along. We will now disconnect from Vatsim. So Vatsim worked today. Overlay worked today. Can't believe it can't believe it just the computer just needed a bit of attention that's all that's all it wanted it wanted me to give it some some one-on-one -on -one time with the <laughs> with the computer until it was satisfied that i would definitely cared about it enough you're welcome igloo food thank you so much james as well really appreciate it thank you you can actually take the aircraft state from the efp so yes but activating on the efp is not sort of instant is it? it it does it step by step as far as i can understand it like runs through a whole series, which is very clever, but um, I'm just going to do this. While we wait, we can put the flaps out. To be honest, we could probably run the replay without the engines running. The chaos says, yep, it runs through the motion. Yeah, very clever. This is very clever that it does that. Quite satisfying as well, if you don't know how to start up an airplane to see all the switches moving in the right order. But we're going to do it this way. Uh, we'll leave that off. That's all fine. I wonder what I could get in trouble for in that pilot report. Did I forget? Tra didn't put the transponder off? Maybe it'll see that. <laughs> Replay. Almost there. In just a couple of moments after this, we'll have ourselves on approach. Fantastic sounds. Good. Those are arms. There's the available. Back to normal. I'm going to release the brakes. And replay. So, let's have a look. Here we are, over the threshold, and then into the flare. Quite a sensitive first flare. Lowered the nose a bit. Got it where I wanted it. 
and then gently lower down onto the runway. Yeah, fine, well within the touchdown zone. Had plenty of room to play with that. Slightest of initial overflares, but nothing too shocking. Um, yeah, nice, nice handling, nice handling flare, I thought. Enjoyed it. Predictable, which is what we want, really, isn't it? Um, so, what we're going to do is do that, disarm the ground spoilers, put the engines up a bit to a sort of approach, I'll rearm the ground spoilers, pause the replay, put it back on approach. further good right and what we're going to do is which view do you want let's have the view ready that's the wrong side isn't it that's better let's have that one you're very welcome four pawns it is indeed a fantastic add-on thank you of course to fly by wire team for your amazing work on this absolutely brilliant absolutely fantastic uh, aircraft and he says that went straight through including your 100 bonus points for landing at a focus airport excellent thanks andy <laughs> excellent excellent um sorry if i missed your question today do please come along to another live stream where i'll hopefully get the chance to answer it but thank you all so much for watching along uh thank you for coming back i'm glad we had uh, a bit of a smoother run of it than last time um shows that a bit of uh, a bit of time uh telling your computer how much it's appreciated does help <laughs> uh thank you all for the chatting thanks for watching thanks for watching on youtube and twitch thanks for those very very kind and generous donations and of course thank you to the moderators for looking after us really really appreciate it um it makes a huge difference of course uh, let me just make sure the landing lights are back on yes they are good um yeah you see them there uh, and yeah i'm gonna say uh, have a fantastic evening we'll see you again in another live stream uh, or video soon so please do keep safe and well thanks for watching bye bye